Hello everyone, and welcome to another match in the Anime Villainous Tournament arc of 2023. As per usual, I'm Chaos in the Sky, and today we'll be seeing Wako vs Kid Jays to determine who will be going up against Azur in the Final Four. Let's get right into it, and see which player comes out on top. Okay, and here we go with the first game between Wako and Kid Jays. Kid Jays has won the dice roll, so now he will be banning first. Whoever he wishes to ban. We've been seeing... Uh, I'm trying to remember who did Kid J's ban in his games with Cortex. That game was too long ago. That was over a week ago for me. I have no memory of who he banned. We know that uh, Father, Light, and Cell, I believe, have been some pretty popular picks as well as bans. And Wako is quite good with Light, I believe. We are going to see him ban Father. Kid J's does not want to have to deal with Father. So we might be seeing Light from Wako. I believe Light is one of Wako's favorites. And I know that uh, Kid Jays is partial to Tetsuo, if I'm not mistaken. I wonder if Wako will actually ban Tetsuo based on that knowledge, or if he'll ban one of the other popular picks. I don't think he'll ban Light, because he probably wants to play as Light. But we could see him ban Cell as a pretty popular one to ban. Mm, it's really those three, Father, Cell, and Light, I think have been our most popular bans that I can remember. Those are usually the go-tos. Wako is taking his time here, really thinking about who he doesn't want to see in this game. Maybe also potentially considering who he wants to play as. Because, of course, whoever he bans, he will not be either to choose either. Either, either, either. Any, any day now, Waka. There you go. See, he heard me. He heard me say that. Is he going to flip it, though? I hope he knows that he's picking his ban right now and he wasn't picking the character he's playing as. He will be banning Tetsuo, so he probably debated a long time with himself if he wanted to ban one of the one of the popular bans like Cell, or if he did want to ban Tetsuo to stop Kid Jays from playing as his his main. Which is unfortunate. I wish he would have let I wish he would have let Kid Jays go with Tetsuo. I want to see some more Tetsuo gameplay. We've only seen like two Tetsuo games in this competition, I think. Maybe only one? I can't remember. Not many, but both characters now play or choosing who they will play as. And it will be, this is a blind reveal, they'll both flip at roughly the same time. We'll be seeing Gendo versus Cell. So Kid Jays did play a lot of Gendo, I think. It, he played Gendo at least once, if not twice, against whoever it is I'm thinking of. Against Cortex, that was his opponent. And we're seeing Wako choosing not to go with Light, instead busting out Cell. So this is going to be... A very, very interesting matchup. I'm very excited to see how this one goes. Cell is one of the better Fate Pressure characters in the game. But overfading Gendo can actually help Gendo. Because it can mess up the timing of Red Alerts. And end up throwing like two angels straight into... Uh, throwing angels into, uh, into third impact. And just absolutely destroying them. I like the way he sets out the instrumentality tokens over there. That's neat. So, who won the... Kid Jays won the toss, right? So, he's going to be going first here. They're just setting up the territory, making sure we're all good to go. I am very excited to see how this plays out. Very excited indeed. Oh, they're setting their hands to the clock. Yeah. But I... I don't... I don't know if either the... Again, Cell is really good at keeping up Fate Pressure, but early Fate Pressure against Gendo can actually kind of backfire on you. So, but some late game freight, uh, freight, <laughs> fate pressure can really help with getting the red alerts when you need them. So I think, I think this could go either way. It's really going to depend on how Wako plays his fate pressure or not. We're going to see Kid J's, he'll draw up to eight there because he can't mulligan anyway. And then Wako gets to decide if he wants to mulligan his starting hand of four. And it looks like he will be mulliganing. He did not like his starting cell hand. Probably didn't have an android or didn't have any items that he wanted to play. Which is very important for Sal out the gate to start getting his items out and getting those androids played so he can start weakening them. And I believe we're ready to play now, so we will see Kid J's as Gendo taking his first turn. He's going to go straight to Tokyo 3 to start, which is interesting. Nerve HQ is normally a favorite start, but he probably wants to get started on getting the strong heroes out on Cell. That is a bit of a dead fate, unfortunately. That'll just be a loss of one power for Cell, presumably, unless he chose to play Time Chamber for no reason. I think he had to choose Crippling Power there. Oh no, he could do up to Time Chamber. I don't know why he wouldn't take away the one power from selling the Dead Fate. We're also going to see him gain and spin one to throw down Shinji. Indeed we are. So now... Oh, they did take away the power. They just hadn't clicked the button yet. That's fine. 
So now Waco, what is he going to do? He doesn't have his benefiting start of one power. However, that first fate did essentially nothing to him. Very little to him. You see, he's really taking his time to figure out where he wants to go. Is this an effect that Kid Jays has on people? When Kid Jays plays against other players, or the other players like, Oh man, I gotta think out like two minutes on my turn one. I'm not trying to be mean to Waco or anything, I just think it was funny. He's gonna go straight to Arena and play Regeneration, a good starting turn for him. That's gonna gain him, that should be a gain of four, if he remembers. There he goes. And he's also going to throw down Reconnaissance to get some early stuff on that. He's going to Fate. Is he going to Multi-Fate? He's not going to Multi-Fate. He's going to straight up Fate. He's going to get Betrayal and Committee Meeting at the same time. Probably wishes he Multi-Fated here. I don't know. I'd probably do Committee Meeting here myself over hitting Shinji with the, the early Betrayal. And that is what Waka was going to choose to do in the end. And that was all of his actions. So we're back over to Gendo. He's going to want to look to go to Terminal Dogma sometime in the near future. He's going to go to Command Center over Nerve HQ. I've never seen Gendo go two turns in a row at the start of the game without going to Nerve HQ. That's very interesting. He's going to play Kozo. And that's going to be all he does. He has no one to vanquish and he has no activate to do. Mm, he is changing his mind and going to Nerve HQ instead. So he gets one extra power because he would have gained three instead of two. You are allowed to take back your turns as long as you've, you know, you're using your clock time and as long as you have not done any actions that cannot be brought back. He's going to play an extra nerve tank over to committee meeting. That won't help him with committee meeting, but it could help him with future heroes such as the Avas, the mass production Avas. Wako's going to go over to Tropical Island and gain three. He is all powered up on a Sunday here. I don't know what day this is going live. I think this is going live on like a Thursday, actually. He's got Android 17 out. So that's one of his androids played. One android to go. But he does need to get to work on actually defeating them. And for that, he will need to lower a lot of strength. And it looks like that is the end of Wako's turn. So we are back over to... Kid Jays, he's going to gain one and go straight for a fate now that there's, ooh, Goku and Trunks. Probably going to see Goku out here, most likely at Arena. He's actually going to play Trunks to Carnival to stop any potential multi-forms. Sorry, something in my throat there. An interesting play. I feel like I probably still would have gone for Goku there, but, you know, Trunks might be the play. He's going to throw out a Marduk Institute, hoping to get more artillery tanks and or children out into play whenever Cell ends up discarding a Cell Jr., should that happen anytime soon. Where is Wako going to go here? He is going to go to Carnavale. And he is going to absorb. Is he going to absorb 17 or Trunks here, actually? I could I could see a point being made for hitting Trunks first to get him out of here if he thinks he has multiform coming up. But he is just going to hit Android 17. Won't be able to clash with him this turn. Going for another full fate. He's going to get Sync failed and Mass Production Ava. Adam isn't out yet, so Sync Failed isn't amazing right now. It's very likely to do little. An early Sync Failed on Gendo doesn't do a lot. Sync Failed is a lot better later on, so we will see a Mass Production Ava thrown straight onto the Command Center. Oh, and we're going to see Gendo go over to Terminal Dogma. Is he? He's going to activate Kozo to trigger Marduk Institute. Cell only has three Cell Juniors, so it's unlikely we see the Cell Juniors trigger anytime soon, so it's not a bad play by any means. That'll let him get out either Ray, Asuka, a tank artillery, or he could actually, now that I think about it, I didn't consider this, he could use it for Misato or Ritsuko. Either or, if he wants to play either of them. He is spoiled for choice right now. And it will be Misato. He's going to throw Misato over at Tokyo 2 and pay for her. Very good, and he gets to discard if he wants and clash with committee meeting. He's not discarding. I, I really wonder what's in his hand that he's not digging more. Gendo usually loves to dig a lot to get his hands on the cards he needs. Specifically Adam and then the Avas, his Ava items and whatnot. So on and so forth. But he must already have some really good cards in hand that like that just discarding is not beneficial to him at the moment. Or at least he doesn't think it's beneficial to him. Whether it is or is not a good call, I'll leave to the scholars of Anime Villainous. I'm just a humble commentator. See him go over to Tropical Island and gain three. As always, Cell loves having just a ridiculous amount of power. He's going to Explosive Coercion. How much is he going to pay for this Coercion? Two cards per power spent. 
He's going to go with two, so he's going to reveal four cards. He gets to add two of those four cards into his hand and then discard the other two cards. Supercomputer, Solar Flare, Kamehameha, and Perfect Barrier. Probably taking Supercomputer and maybe Perfect Barrier. He doesn't have to add any cards to his hand, actually, if he wants to. He gets to put up to two cards into his hand. He is going to take both Supercomputer and Perfect Barrier, though, which means he's going to immediately play the Supercomputer, and he's one of the people that likes to have the double move at Tropical Islands. Very fair. So he can, with Perfect Barrier, defeat Android 17 on his turn, so that's probably going to be a warning bell for Gendo to go straight over to Tokyo 3. The question is, is will he be able to do anything other than gain a power and fate if he goes to Tokyo 3? He's actually just going to let him get 17 out of there. He's not even going to try and stop it. Instead, he's going to go to Nerve HQ to gain 3. And throw out Legacy of Gahern. And what else are we going to see from Kid J's here? He's going to discard Ava 0, zero. He's going to play a Nerve Artillery for 2. Not too shabby. So, Legacy of Gahern, very likely to trigger because Cell is going to be fading this turn. As well as uh, Cell could play a hero on his own at some point. We're going to see the Absorb rather than the Perfect Barrier to get one more use out of Imperfect's ability before he clashes with Android 17 at the end of his turn. Of course, he's going to hit Gendo with the Fate. And he's choosing to Multi-Fate this time and he hit the Red Alert with it. Very strong Multi-Fate there. Israfel and Gagiel. Not very strong angels, but getting those not strong angels into the discard means that it's more likely to see a 4 or a 5 strength angel come out from Adam or future red alerts, so very worthwhile. That will trigger Legacy of Gahern, so Kid Jays now gets to add an item or form into his hand. Will he get Adam even though there's no way for him to have the power to play Adam on his turn? Or will he choose... One of the Ava items, maybe Ava 01 for Shinji. I think he does have to reveal the card to make sure he's not cheating. And he chose Ava Cage, actually, which is one of Gendo's most powerful items, I would say. Very useful. And then we're going to see Wako clash with 17, which will make him semi-perfect. So he will draw four cards. He'll have a hand of seven. And that will be the end of his turn. Now he just needs to find and play 18. She could be in these 14 cards down here. Oh, we're going to see an immediate top fate from Kid J's, despite having no power. Although he didn't have anywhere to move to gain power anyways, with the way his territory is covered now that I think about it. We're going to get Piccolo and Vegeta. He's going to throw Vegeta over the arena to block that top fate, and then potentially discard some cards, I assume. He's got five cards in hand, so he does want to probably get rid of some stuff to start drawing into Adam. Going to discard Ava 02. Just Ava 02? Just Ava 02. All right. Back over to Wako. I almost called Wako Kid J's. Happens to the best of us. He's going to go to Ginger Town. Probably wants to discard a lot. He's got seven cards in his hand, and I assume none of them are Android 18. He's immediately going to get rid of Self-Destruct. Not really going to help him that much anytime soon. Same for Kamehameha. Perfect Barrier could have been used to get rid of Trunks while fading, but he's more worried about getting Android 18 in his clutches, as well as we haven't seen Multiform yet, which would really help with 18. So that's all very fair. Even getting rid of Special Beam Cannon. Interesting. Probably doesn't want to have to spend the power on Special Beam Cannon right now. He'd rather stockpile that power for a while longer. Oh, we're going to see him go to Command Center and use the Nerve Artillery to defeat Mass Production. That allows him to gain two, and then he can use Misato's Activate to play another card, which he will play Ritsuko. Does Ritsuko trigger there? I don't know if Ritsuko triggers there. And then he's also going to play out another Nerve Tank to defend Nerve HQ. Very fair. Back over to Wako's turn. All Wako wants to do right now is get his hands on Android 18. Could we see him get rid of Trunks here with a Clash as well while he fates? All he needs is one Strength Reduction card. Yeah, he does have a Perfect Barrier, so that'll be Trunks defeated at the end of this turn. Because he is now 2 Strength, as is Semi-Perfect Cell. Multi-Fate or Straight Fate? Wako, it's going to be a Multi-Fate. He got Fruit of Life. That's an unfortunate Multi-Fate. That one kind of hurts. He's going to put Israfel back on top, so that's a guaranteed Israfel for that next Fruit of Life. And then he will clash with Trunks, cleaning up his territory a bit more. And we're back over to Kid J's as Gendo. Look at the time advantage Kid J's has over Wako. I'm telling you, there's something about Kid J's. 
Something about this man that he just causes people to, ooh, Gohan in 16. 16 can be pretty good here. It'll force Wako to have to go and clash with him somewhere or another. And he's going to make it be the arena. With Vegeta there especially, that's not really somewhere Cell relishes to go right now. He's going to throw out a Marduk Institute. If that Marduk Institute gets triggered, it won't accomplish anything because he has no power, but that's fine. I'm really surprised that this Reconnaissance hasn't triggered yet. Although Gendo doesn't have that many effects, I guess, and he normally likes to keep his effects in hand to use. Although typically he'll discard some early whatever card it is I'm thinking of. He'll discard some early, whatchamacallit, horrible truth, that's it. We're going to see him do the Cell Jr. Vanquish. No, he's not. He's actually just going to do the Clash and keep the Cell Jr. He, I thought he might do the Vanquish with the Cell Jr. there just to trigger Marduk Institute when it wouldn't accomplish anything, but fair enough. He wants to keep that Cell Jr. If he gets one more, he can use two of them together to defeat Vegeta and get Vegeta out of there, which will be very strong for him. There's the Magi, my favorite Gendo item, which he will then activate. So he gets to draw three cards, discard two cards from his hand. He will discard Reconnaissance, or uh, Horrible Truth, which should trigger Reconnaissance, I believe. We'll see if anyone remembers the whatchamacallit. He did play an item which moves Gagil, and then Ritsuko lets him draw two. Yep, they're checking Horrible Truth for Reconnaissance right now. Yep, there goes Reconnaissance. Falk noticed it. So now Cell gets to reveal cards from the top of his deck until he gets an item ally or a hero. He would love 18 or a Cell Jr. right now, to be honest. He got Multiform. Multiform also very useful. He'll want that for when 18 gets out here in a minute, and it'll help him with Showdown as well. Oh, and that was the end of Gendo's turn, so we're back over to Waka. Looks like he's going to put more focus on fading right now rather than trying to get out more cards. Oh, no, he actually wants to discard is why he's going here. He's going to discard Appeal to Pride. I thought he might go to Tropical Islands to just preemptively play a lot of cards like uh, Multiform. He's going to discard Bug Drone. He did discard an ally there, so that should trigger Marduk Institute. Yeah, that should trigger Marduk Institute before this fate happens, but I, I don't think our judges are noticing, unfortunately. Fruit of Life and Mass Production Ava. He's going to throw that Ava right on Terminal Dogma into the threat of Nerve Tanks. Oh, yep, there we go. Wako noticed that he triggered Marduk Institute. Because he discarded a Cell Jr. So that Marduk Institute will trigger really quickly. And he has one power, so he can play a Nerve Tank or one of the children with this Marduk Institute. And it looks like he's grabbing from the discard? Or he was checking the discard and now he's decided to grab from his deck instead. What are we going to see played here? He's going to play Asuka for one, and he's going to put Asuka at the Command Center. Defending the Command Center. Very interesting. It's always interesting to see the different ways people play Gendo, because Gendo is a weird one to play. And now we are over to Kid J's turn. What will he be doing? Cell could play Android 18 in any moment. We have already seen a, whatchamacallit, go by. We're probably, hopefully from Kid J's, he's getting low on his deck. He really wants to get a, another crippling blow in Time Chamber. That sucks. That's an unlucky fate. He's going to give the plus one to Vegeta so that another Cell Jr. is not enough to defeat him, which is very fair. But anyways, there's an Ava Cage being thrown out. One of Gendo's favorite items, which is going to move Gogil into range of Asuka. Oh, so he's actually going to choose to do the Ava 01 instead to move Gogil so that he can use Asuka to defeat Gogil next turn. So looking to defeat Gogil rather than go with the third impact... But really, hoping Kid J's gets third impact or uh, gets Adam out pretty soon. Cell is getting closer and closer. That's going to be the multi form moved over to give Vegeta the minus one, or rather to remove the plus one. So that'll put him back to four. And he's going to use the double move with Supercomputer to move multi form right back. Does he have Android 18 in hand? I assume not, because he's not immediately playing 18. He's going to play out his other Cell Jr., and he's actually not going to set up the Vegeta defeat. He's going to put it at Ginger Town to defend Ginger Town. An intriguing play. Preparing for when he gets Showdown at some point. We're going to see an explosive coercion for... He's double-checking how many cards he has to figure out. He's going to go for two. So unless 18 is the bottom card of this deck, he'll get 18 here. 
18 is the bottom card of the deck. That's rough, buddy. That's rough. He's going to discard both disappearances and take Time Machine and Absorb instead, it looks like. He actually... He could have uh, not taken Time Machine or Absorb there to guarantee the Android 18 draw, but instead he's just going to wait on getting 18. We're going to see the Ava 01 defeat on Gogil here. Asuka is at... That's not where Angels go. That's not where Angels go. There you go. The classic... That's the most classic of all Gendo mistakes. So then he gets to gain two. He has his play and his activate. He's going to use his play for Ava Cage and then probably activate Ava Cage to get Ava 01 back. Indeed he is. So we'll be able to throw that onto Shinji or Asuka again if he needs to. And that will be the end of Gendo's turn. He really needs to get Adam out soon, though. Cell can go pretty quick, especially when he gets into showdown. And Gendo can get significantly stalled by red alerts and whatnot, depending on the layout of the Fate deck. I'm going to see another Fate from Cell here. Kid Jays would love to see a red alert come up right here, because he should either have... Whatever it is I'm thinking of. He should either have third impact in hand or it's coming up. And he can third impact for free because he hasn't played Adam yet. And that would be another red alert milled from his deck. We're going to see Time Machine played to Vegeta's location, which means that Wako now gets to put an Absorb back into his deck. Shuffle it and then draw. Oh, changing his mind. He's going to go with Regeneration instead. He is a little low on power. He's not quite at Showdown yet, which means he's not going to need to be clashing nonstop. Cell really doesn't like having to play Regeneration when he's in Showdown, is his main thing. He must have drawn 18 there because he's not discarding, it looks like. I imagine he would be discarding to get hold of 18 if he hadn't just drawn it from Time Machine's effect. Or maybe he didn't and he's debating what card to discard. Hard decisions for Wako here. Hard decisions. He's going to go for a fate. A normal fate, not a multi. He did get a red alert, which is not the worst thing for Kid Jays right now. Because I don't believe... Unless it's in the discard and I missed it. I don't believe we've seen the... The whatever it is. We have not seen the third impact. So it is very possible that Kid Jays could hit a third impact immediately followed by... The other thing I'm thinking of, Adam. He's going to discard Instant Transmission. Oh, he's going to play Instant Transmission. Didn't he already play Explosive Coercion? I think he already played Explosive Coercion. Okay, I think they're realizing that he already played Explosive Coercion. Yeah. He's going to discard the Instant Transmission because he wanted to draw the last card. So he definitely has 18 in his hand. What are we going to see from Kid Jays here? Are we going to see Adam played or Third Impact potentially? We're going to see Ava 01 thrown onto Shinji, so that makes him 5 strength. Very powerful. He can defeat Bardiel all on his own. Adam? Not Adam. Another nerve artillery, still just setting up. There are only 5 cards left here. He might not have Adam in his hand. He's got 5 cards in his hand. He, he must have Adam in his hand if he's not discarding. I'd be quite shocked otherwise. We're going to see the regenerate from Cell, and then probably he's going to play Android 18 with all this exorbitant power he's gained. Indeed, he is. Spin to four on 18, and then he has two move actions to do a double move of multiform here to really just weaken her down. Going to move multiform there, give her a minus one, and then move it back, potentially, and then move it back. So if he has Absorb or Perfect Barrier in his hand, he could get into Showdown on his turn. What will Kid Jays do in response? He's going to go right to his bottom fate. Understandable. Who are we going to get here? Mr. Satan and Krillin. Krillin delays the Android 18 defeat. Because now she will be a little too strong. And I do not believe there's any way for Cell to go to Carnival and subtract two. He's going to play Krillin straight to Tropical Island. So Cell cannot immediately clash. And I believe Cell's Cell Jr. has been reshuffled. Unless he immediately drew it by pure luck. So there's no way he can get rid of Krillin this turn, I believe. Krillin is going to be a, a thorn in his sign. Oh, he could have instant transmission to move the Cell Jr. Played a Nerve Tanks and ended his turn. We are going to see Wako go over to Carnavale. Probably going to weaken 18 even with Krillin in play if he has the option. Unless it's Perfect Barrier. Perfect Barrier would do nothing. But an Absorb here could be pretty strong or an instant transmit to move multiform. 
I don't know why there was a tab click there. We are going to see the Absorb on 18, so she is at 3 strength. She's just slightly too strong for Semi-Perfect to defeat. AT Field and Seal Interference. AT Field makes it where Bardiel can't be defeated by just Ava 01, but I was going to say it's not going to do much with 3rd Impact coming up. Mm, but he is still going to choose to do it. Will we see the 3rd Impact from Kid J's here? Does he have it? He's going to go to the command center. Is he going to defeat Barty L, even when he's all juiced up? Oh, he's going to defeat the mass production Ava. I forgot that was even over there. That makes a lot of sense. He wants to have access to his top fate with Cell probably getting to showdown on... Uh, well, he's not going to be able to get to showdown on his turn outside of some Kamehameha nonsense. He could Kamehameha to get into it. He is going to hit the third impact finally, so that'll get rid of AT Field and Barty L for free because Adam is not out. We are still lacking Adam, however, but he is going to guarantee draw Adam here because the Magi will let him draw three of these five cards. He discards two. Yeah, discard sector lockdown. We disrespect that card in this house. Ritsuko lets him draw two, so we will most likely finally see Adam come out next turn. A, a little late on Adam coming out with Cell so close to showdown, but it's not terrible. He can definitely make it work. Two red alerts have gone by. There's one red alert guaranteed, though, so he's going to be at the whims of the Fate reshuffle, unfortunately. The reshuffle could really decide Gendo's fate in this game. It's going to be a minus one on 18. And then Waka is checking his fate discard just to see what heroes he can expect coming up, I assume. Sensu Beans is one of these cards, so we could see a Sensu Bean Android 16 actually to really slow down Cell getting to showdown. He's going to get a Disappearances off, and then he's going to clash with Krillin. A Sensu Bean 16 here would be very strong. Or even Gohan to guarantee Gohan in the the showdown. But I think Sensu Beaning... Yeah, there's the Sensu Beans or Cell games. He could take his luck with Cell games and just hope he lucks into two good heroes, one of them being 16. But I, I think the guarantee... Yeah, the guaranteed 16 play here is probably the strongest play. Just ensuring that 18 cannot be defeated anytime soon. It is going to incentivize Cell going to Carnival and fading him a little bit more, but now he has to go there to Clash with 16, move to another location, then go back there to Clash with 16 again. We're going to see him throw out a Purpose of Nerve, wanting to gain some power soon, and he's going to activate Ava Cage before he hits his reshuffle to get back probably Ava 02 for Asuka. Ava 00, well he must have Rey in his hand, so he's planning on playing Rey somewhere and giving her Ava 00. Not as worried of, as as uh, make it not as worried to make use of Asuka. And he does get to draw from Ritsuko, and then he gets to discard after the fact. But he's only going to discard Fruit of Knowledge. Interesting. Wako, probably going to go to Carnival and punch Android 16 in the mouth, if I had to guess. He's he's in a wee bit of a rough spot here. That Senzu Bean timing was really rough for him. He is going to go to Carnival, eh? which is going to trigger Purpose of Nerve to give Gendo another two. And he's not going to get this. This last card is Red Alert, so that is a guaranteed Red Alert, which is pretty good for Wako, to be honest. Where is he putting this Ava? I'm very shocked that Wako would not just throw this straight to Terminal Dogma. Maybe I'm in the wrong... Okay, yeah, I was about to say. He was considering his options, but there's nothing defending Terminal Dogma right now, not even the Nerve Artillery. We're going to see him throw down a Bug Drone just to gain one, and then he's going to Clash with 16 to end his turn. So he could, if he drew Kamehameha, he could hit 18 with the Kamehameha to still get into Showdown on his turn, potentially. We're seeing Kid J's go to Command Center. Command Center to play Adam? Interesting play. Bold strategy, Cotton. We'll see if it works out for him. Because now this means he can't go to Command Center his next turn to immediately make use. Oh, but he is going to do the Vanquish on the with the Nerve Tanks on Mass Production Ava. That makes a lot more sense then. Yeah, that's totally fair. Incredibly fair. Not sure it's the play I would have made, but a, a good play, I would say. We're going to see Cell go over to Tropical Islands. He's at 16 power. This is this is a Cell game, ladies and gents. He's going to move Multiform. Is he going to move it again for any reason? He doesn't need to. But he has gotten Android 16 down to zero strength, which is a, a wee bit overkill, but, you know, Wako is allowed to do as Wako wants. It looks like he does not have the Kamehameha Wave. 
So he will not be getting into showdown this turn. But it is basically guaranteed next turn. He's going to do an instant transmit to move multiform. That doesn't do anything to Vegeta. Vegeta cannot have less than four strength. It's Vegeta's entire gimmick is that you can't weaken him. And so Wako has completely changed his mind upon realizing that and just ending his turn. All right. Kid Jays now gets to play his first Angel and get his first token. It's going to be Ramiel. Very easy to defeat. Definitely, he wants to have a Horrible Truth. We saw him discard one Horrible Truth earlier, but he's already cycled his deck and done a lot of drawing. He's going to go to Terminal Dogma to get that Fate. Not sure what this is, if he should be multi-fading or not, but he's just going for a straight Fate. It's Tien. Tien, ooh, Cell Games is good here, but I would have I would have counted and multi-fated Tien, personally. A multi-fate on Tien would have been really strong. That'll hold him back one more turn. Is he going to go for Cell Games instead? Mm, I don't know about that. That is two more heroes for his showdown, but I might have... Tien was guaranteed one more turn not in showdown. I probably would have... I probably would have gone for Tien there just to ensure that uh, you'd get to play Tien to like Ginger Town or something, and yeah, and then you get Mr. Satan. I'm not sure about this play by Kid Jays. It's probably not a terrible play. I mean, now Mr. Satan doesn't get pulled by the other Cell games. He does get to throw out Gohan. He's going to put Gohan at Tropical Islands, so Cell will have to allow a Gohan showdown to go through if he goes and defeats Android 18 right now. If he goes to Clash with her, he will have to deal with Gohan. Mr. Satan is already out, and Tien is already gone, so he's very likely to pull, like, Trunks, Goku, Krillin, Vegeta. Uh, Android 16 could be in that mix. Horrible Truth, he's going to get rid of the... He's deciding who to get rid of. He's going to get rid of Kozo. It always happens. Ko Kozo's purpose is to die for our Horrible Truth sins. That's what he's best at. Now, we'll get rid of Ramiel. So, he is going to get hit with a... Whatchamacallit, however. He's going to Ava Cage back 0-1. That makes sense. He is going to get hit with a Red Alert, but he'll be able to immediately go to... to Command Center to get rid of whatever Angel gets played by it, more than likely. Unless it's Tabris. Tabris is the only thing that would really mess with that plan. We are going to see Wako go to get into Showdown. He's just going to live with the Gohan in Showdown. He knows that it's more important to get it underway. He is going to get a normal fate. Oh my goodness, double red alert. That could actually decide the game. That right there could actually decide the game. There was only one red alert in these 13 cards. Definitely should have... Yo, Ariel! The best of all... Of all the angels. I love Ariel. Not multi-fading there by Wako could actually decide the game. The fact that that was, that was insanely lucky for Kid Jays. He got, uh, he got a double red alert. There's only one red alert in these 13 cards, and it could be the bottom card. There's no way to know. But uh, 18 is out of here. Cell is in showdown. He now has to play four heroes to his four locations, and there are a lot of strong heroes lined up to come out. He's probably just not wanting to see Goku is the main thing here. He should be revealing these as he goes, not just pulling out four, but I guess this works just as well. Uh, Piccolo, I forgot Piccolo. I knew I was forgetting a hero. Piccolo, Trunks, and Krillin, fairly weak. And 16, he didn't get Vegeta or Goku. But that means Vegeta and Goku are in these four cards. So where are all of these heroes going to go? And I believe we've already seen Senzu Beans discarded. Yeah, get those minus ones out of the way. Where are all of these guys going to get thrown down? Krillin is annoying. He probably wants Krillin to be wherever he's going to clash. Oh, but he has to... Wherever he's going to clash is where 16 needs to be. That makes a lot of sense. And it looks like he wants to go to Arena to clean it up. He'll be able to use a Cell Jr. Oh, no, he won't, actually. With Krillin out, he won't be able to defeat Vegeta when he goes there. Interesting. That's going to be a rough one. We are going to see Kid Jays go straight over to Command Center, throwing out Ava-01, and then Ava-01 with the Nerve Artillery will be able to defeat Ariel which he wants to do immediately. Get Ariel out of there. He he just wants to rush. Hardcore. Probably going to use his activate to take back Ava 01. It'll let him cycle and draw more, because uh, he really... Oh no, he's actually going to do a play action. Oh, he's going to throw out Ray at Nerve HQ to just set up more defense and draw too. He really wants to draw into his horrible truths and just horrible truth every hero that comes out. So I wonder if Wako is going to realize here that he can't defeat Vegeta this turn. No matter what he does. He could play a Cell Jr. to Krillin and punch Krillin with a Cell Jr., but then he has to clash with Android 16 instead of Vegeta at the end of his turn. Oh, he's going to play the Kamehameha Wave. Okay. 
So that will let... He has to hit 16 and then Krillin, and then he can use the Cell Jr. to defeat Vegeta. Okay, okay. He has to hit Krillin here, though, if he wants to be able to defeat Vegeta. No, you can't do that. Vegeta is at 5 strength right now. You have to hit Krillin. I guess you could hit, like, Piccolo or something, but, like... You, you have to hit Krillin. Yeah, there you go. Now he can use the Cell Jr. to defeat Vegeta. I forgot the possibility of a double-hit Kamehameha taking out Krillin and 16 at the same time. Oh, he's gonna vanquish Mr. Satan for free with the Cell Jr.? And then just... Oh, you don't, yeah, you don't have to discard Cell Jr. there. And then he's just gonna clash with Vegeta? He's not gonna clash with Vegeta? I don't know what Wako's turn was. I'm confused. I'm lost. There's Shamshell. Is there a horrible truth potential to get rid of Shamshell here? Doesn't look like it. Instead, he's just going to go for the fate to keep Cell slowed down. Really wants to get, yeah, wants to get Goku out. Did I say that Vegeta could be pulled by Cell games earlier when Vegeta was in play? Vegeta has been here so long, I forgot Vegeta was in play. <laughs> That's my bad. I was probably thinking of Trunks was the other super. Look, all these blonde Super Saiyan dudes look the same to me, dude. They all look the same. I'll say it. Yeah, that's my bad. A little bit of a commentary slip there. It happens. Do you know how many competitive Anvil games I've recorded in the past, like, two weeks? Listen, man, they're all starting to blend together. We're going to see him throw out Ava 0, zero onto Shinji. That is strong enough to defeat Sham Shell. And Cell is not getting fate pressure on, so unless this red alert is at, like, the top four cards of this deck... Yeah, he's going to get some fate pressure now. He's got to get that other red alert. I honestly... Unless Cell gets some crazy kill action going here, with Gohan, Goku, and Piccolo all in play, I really don't see Cell winning this one with how the red alerts played out. I think I think Wako is going to end up kicking himself for... for not multi-fading that last red alert earlier, because drawing two... I mean, how how was he to know? He was probably more so betting on, like, what are the odds that I draw the second red alert with whatever, but also multi-fading would have reshuffled the other red alert in, so I think I think that was a bit of a misplay on Wako's part. Multi-fading would have put him in a much better position overall. He's going to choose... I don't know if he took two cards there. Did he only take the perfect barrier there? I was too busy talking. Committee meeting and mass production. He has to, like, full-on fate. He can't afford to multi-fate. He really needs to pull out the other red alert to slow down Gendo. One of these heroes is being put on Terminal Dogma, and I think committee meeting is the better choice. Anywhere else is a... Committee meeting pretty much always wants to go to Terminal Dogma. Any other location is a place that Gendo wants to go to have to clash anyway. He's going to clash with Piccolo, which will give Piccolo a minus one, and that will be the end of Wako's turn. We're over to Kid J's. He's going to go to Command Center, use Ava 0, Zero to defeat Sham Shell. He's going to be able to go to Terminal Dogma next turn to clash if he feels like he doesn't need to fate. And with Cell's board state, I don't think he needs to worry about fading. I think the only thing Kid J's needs to do right now is just go to whatever location better lets him kill angels. And actually, if he he might not even need to go to Terminal Dogma to worry about committee meeting. He might go to Nerve HQ to immediately get the, uh, the horrible truth kill. Mm, okay, we're going to see Misato activated to put Eva 2 on Shinji. Kid J's, gotta say, playing the most cringe Gendo game of my career that I've ever seen. I don't think he's put the right kid in the right robot at all. I, he might have put Shinji in the right robot once. He used his normal play in action for purpose of nerve there. Very fair. Gonna see... Wako go over to... Arena to have the Cell Jr. vanquish Goku. And then he can clash with Vegeta to end his turn. Words. He's gonna play instant transmission for one. To move multi-form over to give Gohan a minus one. He, he's getting in position where he might be able to close out Showdown. Without steady fate pressure, Cell can really catch up. But he is giving up fading in the meantime. Gendo is very close to winning as well. It's going to be Saha Quail. Not getting Tabris here is a really big deal. Or Armasail for that matter. Can he horrible truth to immediately kill Saha Quail here? That is the big question. He's going to play a Nerve Tank for one. He needs that Nerve Tank to be able to kill because Shinji is only a three strength. And he does have the Horrible Truth. So he will ditch Asuka here. T 
to use the Nerve Tank plus the Ava O2 Shinji to defeat Saha Quail. He will enter Showdown at the start of his turn, and he, he's at Wincon. He just moves to Terminal Dogma and clashes, and I highly doubt that Cell can defeat even with the minus one on Piccolo and Gohan. I highly doubt that he can defeat Gohan, Trunks, and Piccolo all in one fell swoop here. It might have been possible with a Kamehameha, actually, but he would need the extra minus one on Gohan. He's gonna go, gonna go to Carnival hoping for that other red alert. He got the other red alert! That, that is really, really lucky for Wako and very unlucky for Kid Jays. He didn't get Tabris or Armasail, though, so it is recoverable. We're probably going to see... That's not where the angel goes. There you go. We're probably going to see... Kid J's kind of needs to go to Tokyo 3 and do a fate, but he has Ray set up to where that doesn't hurt him too much. So that should be fine. Are we seeing an instant transmission by Cell to move Multiform to Piccolo? Mostly just moving it to move for Gohan later, I assume, and he's going to clash with Piccolo to end his turn. So we are back over to Kid J's. He's in a rough position. I think he really does need to hit a fate here. Yeah, he's got to hit a fate here to make sure that he slows down Cell enough to get rid of that unlucky red alert. Can't really be mad at that lucky red alert timing when he got so lucky with that top deck red alert. He's going to spin two to throw down a nerve artillery, and he's going to perform his fate action, which will move Zariel, and Zariel will be in range of the nerve artillery plus the nerve tanks. Time chamber and crippling blow. Yeah, you just want to give plus one strength to Gohan here is the main thing. The plus one strength on Trunks doesn't really matter because he's still dead to Cell Jr., but getting Gohan back to six is a big deal. That's going to move Zariel. He's going to get to gain one. Zariel is in kill range. He can't kill Zariel and hit the committee meeting at the same time, though, unfortunately. Going to see... Oh, you can't gain three and play self-destruct. He'd have to not gain the three. Which he could still self-destruct, which would be catastrophic for Kid J's. He's going to move over Multiform instead? I still would have self-destructed and threatened win. Oh, he has Perfect Barrier so he can clash with them. Yeah, that's a fair way to do it too. So he gets to clash. So he is now a win con. He can go to Arena or Ginger Town to win on his turn. And, oh no! Kid Jays is fate locked. That's going to be game. Such an incredibly close game. That red alert, uh, that red alert timing, that super lucky early red alert was not good enough to get the luck on the second red alert. If he just, uh, if it just hadn't been a red alert, that might have been the game decider. That was very unfortunate. Kid J's bet on that red alert not showing up essentially let go of some fate pressure to try and just win faster than sell, but in the end it, uh, turned against him. He is gonna get to defeat Zariel here, but it doesn't matter. He can't fate, and Wako wins on his turn through a myriad of different ways. Self-destruct, clashing, arena vanquish. Doesn't matter. Yeah, he just defeats Trunks here. Self-destruct for the style points. And that will be game. Man, I really thought when that second red alert came off the top of the fate deck that Gendo was going to have this on lock. But alas, Cell made the comeback. Good for Wako, really, despite that red alert. Kept his cool, kept playing his game, and made it all work out really well. So... Well done indeed by by Wako. He wins the first game, and we'll be going on to game two to see how it plays out. Okay, and here we go with round two between Wako and Kid Jays. Wako is... Oh no, Wako shouldn't be the starting player. Shouldn't it be uh, Wako's banning first? I thought that it would still be Kid Jays banning first here. I guess Kid J's must have decided to be the second player, even though he could have been the starting player. Must be what happened. So Wako is banning Gendo after we just saw Gendo played. And then Kid J's is sticking with banning Father. He does not want to play against Father. Are we going to see Kid J's pull out Tetsuo here, potentially? I know Tetsuo is his main. I believe he has been banned out of playing Tetsuo every single opportunity until now. Wako is now choosing his character because Kid J's gets to counterpick into him, should he so choose. Who are we going to see here? Who are we going to see? It's going to be Cell. He's going to play another round of Cell. I'm going to probably need to get Cell ready for the thumbnail. And then who will Kid J's be playing? Is he going to play Tetsuo? I feel like Tetsuo does not like this matchup. Tetsuo does not like a, a significantly fate pressure-heavy character. 
He's gonna play Merrick! He's gonna play Merrick! Oh baby, this is gonna be a game. I feel like Cell definitely has the advantage here, but Merrick is always a roulette, you know? I don't know why they bring the things all the way down here. It's because it's where their names default at, but their names will move to wherever they choose the selector thing. There's no need to bring them all the way down here on the table. Anyways, I mean, Merrick is always sort of a, a roulette wheel. It really just depends on how lucky you get with playing the god card holders or not. But I feel like he definitely doesn't like fate-heavy characters because it makes it harder for him to set up what he wants. Really, he just wanted to be able to have three tile slash tokens to put in a row again. That's the real reason Kid J's made this decision. The classic Waco, I also shuffle my... I also shuffle my mover, that's what it's called. Alright, well... I don't know who's going first here, if it's Kid J's or Waco. It, it should be Kid J's, but Waco banned first? Maybe I had that backwards? I'm telling you, all these games are blending together after I've recorded so many of them. Oh no, Kid J's did, did just decide to be the secondary player. He wanted to get the mulligan and the start one power. Very interesting choice. I guess he knew he was going to play Merrick, and he really wanted to be able to mulligan his Merrick hand. Could always, the best thing about going second as Merrick is if you have Millennium Rod in your starting hand, so you have the one power, and you go to Domino City, and then just spin four power to immediately play the Millennium Rod. That's a good turn one for Merrick, in my world. Just getting to play the Millennium Rod without worry of Tomb Keepers getting rid of it. I absolutely, if I ever have the ring in my starting hand, I pretty much always go straight to Domino City and play it on my turn one. And if I have, if I'm going second and I have the power for... Millennium Rod, I do the same thing at Domino City. Getting those Millennium Item Outs... Uh, Millennium Item Outs? Millennium Items Out is paramount for... for Merrick. Oh, they didn't start the timer. There we go. He's gonna go straight to Arena and Bug Drone. Fair play, and we're gonna see a forced Mai here. He can't Tournament Bracket. He has to play Mai, because Tournament Bracket can't play anything to Merrick's location. And then Mai is going to cover Domino City, and did he drew three cards. He did, he did the draw thing instead of the search thing. So he gets to set Merrick's Fate deck however he pleases, which is not good for Merrick. Also, Merrick having his double play covered sucks. Of all the characters that hate not having a double play, I feel like Merrick is one of the most. Tien and Senzus. This is a Force Tien, and Tien at Arena isn't the worst thing ever here. Yeah, that'll stop him from being able to fate. He basically just gets to spend his turn killing Tien if he has a card in hand that can kill Tien. Even better if... It's it's unlikely that Cell doesn't have a power reduction card he can play. It's Perfect Barrier. Actually, there's a good shot he doesn't have Absorb or Perfect Barrier. And if he doesn't, then this is a really bad turn for Tien. We're going to see the Innocent Facade. Going to get Joey and Teo, which will accomplish nothing. But he has guaranteed that he's not getting faded. I don't think there's any way Cell can change that with zero power at the moment. So, are we going to see... He has Disappearances. He's going to gain two from Disappearances. He should gain two there, not just one. And then he doesn't get to do anything else. That was an incredibly good TN. Very unlucky for Wako. Very strong TN turn. Uh, they're just making sure the discard piles can fit. All good, all good. Merrick is going to go over to Kybercraft. He wants to follow up with another Fate. Does he have another Fate playing card to play whatever that third card Wako setup is? Mm, he doesn't. He has Strings, who he's going to play to gain three. Will he immediately vanquish Mai? Honestly, wouldn't be the worst idea ever. Oh, is he fading right now? No, he's not. Now he's fading. Tien again. <laughs> Time Chamber and Crippling Blow. Well, he can take away that two power he gained, or he can make Tien a three strength. Three strength Tien is actually, like, a little annoying this early in the game. Especially when Tien... Yeah, honestly, a three strength holding the arena down kind of really sucks for Cell. The thing Cell hates the most is four strengthers, aka Gohan and not Gohan, uh, Goku and Vegeta, holding that location. He's deciding not to vanquish Mai right now, even though that would open up his double play. Fair enough. Cell immediately wants to follow up with the fate because these god card holders should be coming up. He multi faded and got a Shizu. That's so lucky. Well, he can uh, since he kept strings. He can actually use strings to get rid of a Shizu on his turn, which could be pretty strong. What else do we have Cell doing over here? Discarding a Cell Jr. Ten cards in here. 20% chance 
of Yugi or Kaiba? We've only seen one tournament bracket go by. There's the multi-form to start weakening up T, uh, Tien again. There are also two tournament brackets, so if he has Innocent Facade, a dual tower kill on a Shizu into a tournament bracket could be major here. Because the Shizu is the first one you want to see. You really want to see a Shizu immediately. Yeah, all he has left is his play action. Innocent Facade? Oh, he didn't have an Innocent Facade. That sucks. Really wanted to try and get the, uh, whatchamacallit. Although, there shouldn't be any way for... For Wako to fate this turn. So he's still safe for one more turn. We're going to see this supercomputer thrown out by Cell here. He can do his double move shenanigans. Wako really enjoys the, the double Tropical Islands move. Which is fair. I normally, I'm a supercomputer at Carnival guy myself. But throwing it at Tropical Islands is also fair. Is he only moving it once? What a what is Wako doing here, I wonder? We're going to see him throw out a time machine to Tien, so he gets to shuffle back in probably disappearances. Indeed, he will shuffle it back in. And then he gets to draw a card. But I believe he's used all his play actions between Supercomputer and Time Machine. And he is going to move Multiform back. I don't see why he wouldn't. No, he's going to move Bug Drone. Well, that's the only reason he wouldn't, is because he cares more about power right now. He should be gaining two there. There he goes. Alright, Merrick, really good odds. Four out of ten of these cards plays a god card holder. Although a two a uh, not tomb keepers, a tournament bracket would play a Shizu to his top fate, which is unfortunate. He's gonna get Vegeta here and double stack the arena, which I think is a very good call. Solar Flare could always fix that for Cell, but definitely you wanna keep that top fate covered as much as you can. And then it looks like he's just discarding basically everything. And he's got Loomis. Early Loomis and Umbra is really good. Not having Fate cards right now, or uh, Fate playing cards right now sucks. Because now Cell gets another opportunity to play out one of the God card holders. Although, if he tournament brackets a Shizu, Umbra is set up to immediately defeat. So he could once again play that gamble. Gonna see a lot of discards from Cell. And Waka was going to throw out a Cell Jr. De debated defending Ginger Town again. He defends Ginger Town with Cell Juniors a lot, but he is actually going to play it over to the arena because there's a lot going on there. Tournament Bracket and Kaiba at the same time. Probably going to take the Kaiba play here. It's very unfortunate that Kid Jays could not get the card he needed to pull either of those himself. Where's Kaiba going? Where's Kaiba going? Going to guard Dual Tower, or block Dual Tower rather. Honestly, I think Dual Tower and Pharaoh's Tomb are probably the best places for him. Domino City as well. Pretty much anywhere other than Kaiba's own craft. We're going to see another fate from Kid Jays. He did get Goku here. So Cell has just got a lot of nonsense to deal with. But he does have disappearances coming up that can really help him catch back up on this power-wise. 25% chance of this innocent facade either getting a tournament bracket or Yugi. And this is an ideal tournament bracket location. He got Yugi. That's very good. Very good to get Yugi out there. I don't know. I feel like Ashizu is the god card holder you want to see the most. Usually. But I feel like I feel like Yugi is almost just as good to see. Because he's the only one you can't clash with anyway. Except some really weird showdown shenanigans where it can happen. But it's very unlikely. We're going to see the Solar Flare on Tropical Island to move Goku to Arena? I gotta ask Wako how many Cell games he's played. Because either I'm insane on how I play Cell, or Wako is insane. He he really values the Tropical Islands. He's going to get four power here. That should be four, not three. There he goes. And that's all of his plays, so he just gets to do a move now. He could move... He's going to move Bug Drone instead of Multiform, which interests me. He's going to move Time Machine for another Disappearances? Disappearances over Solar Flare. Okay. Maybe I'm the one who's crazy. <laughs> I've never seen Cell played like this before. What are we going to have from Kid Jays? He's going to go over to the Pharaoh's Tomb, gain one. He's going to keep that very strong Fate Pressure on. Ooh. Trunks or Time Chamber? Honestly, I don't know that I wouldn't have time-chapered Goku and Vegeta there, to be completely real with you, but I think playing Trunks is just as good. 
if not better. And here's an innocent facade, hoping for that tournament bracket. Did not get it, but got Bakura to help with Yugi, which is really good. He really just wants to get a shadow game now. He also has a lot of power built up. Going to discard Sadistic Glee. So Millennium items are very much on the table to be played right now. I would say Kid Jays is in a very strong position, and Cell is... He's having a game. I don't know what kind of game Cell is having, but he's having one. Definitely, he's looking for this 50% shot of getting the tournament bracket to get a Shizu on that top fate right now. Although Umbra, it's a perfect position for Umbra to defeat a Shizu because Loomis being at 2 strength instead of 3 doesn't matter to Kid Jays because he can use Bakura plus Loomis to defeat Yugi even if Loomis is at 2 strength instead of 3. There's another Disappearances. So Cell is gaining 5 power here, so he's buffing up his power a lot. He did get the tournament bracket, so that will be a Shizu played to the Pharaoh's Tomb. We could see, if he has Millennium Ring in hand, which is a big if, we could see a cheeky defeat on a Shizu with Umbra to then use... Oh, he's actually going to tournament bracket Joey and just let a Shizu stay in there. We could see a cheeky Millennium Ring play is what I'm getting at, because what's-his-face, uh, Wako is fate-locked. He did get the challenge with Joey. That hurts. And there are no tournament brackets, so outside of Millennium Ring coming in clutch here, there's no way for Merrick, outside of a really lucky Innocent Facade reshuffle, to get a Shizu out. And Umbra is not enough to defeat Joey right now. Are we going to see a Millennium Item played here? Disposable Pawns, okay. He's going to ditch Umbra? To replay Umbra over to Kaiba. For one. Basically using Disposable Pawns as a move action. Interesting. I love it when Merrick plays Instant Transmission while playing against Cell. Cell games in Android 16. You don't really want to sell games here because Android 16 is pretty great. Yeah, I was about to say, probably throw him on Ginger Town just to force Cell to go over there and do like a, a Power Steel card and a, uh, a Clash. It's going to be a weak turn for him, essentially, is what you're forcing. Yep, Absorb. Gain two power, get that minus one on 16, then he can Clash with him. Not going to accomplish a lot. Otherwise, he does get to discard a bit, which is nice. But overall, a, a fairly weak sell turn, I would say. And that will be the end of Android 16. And the end of Wako's turn, so we're back over to Kid J's. What is Kid J's going to do here? Does he have... He really needs a Shadow Game or to play some Millennium Items right now. That's what he really wants. Odeon being played to Joey could also be really strong. Okay, this is interesting. What do we have being done here? A rare hunter played to dual tower. What is this card? Did he count this card? It's an anti-rule, so he gains two. I mean, that's, that's a good plus. No shot of a Millennium Ring play now. I'm really curious as to why he went to dual tower to do this. Yeah, he already played rare hunter. You can't play anything else. Okay, weird feel like going to Domino or Pharaoh's Tomb would have been a better option for taking that turn. Because he didn't use the Vanquish action at all. We're going to see Wako go to Tropical Island to gain three. Trying to get to 20 power so he can win turn one. As, uh, or win start of turn as Prince John. But he is actually just going to spend four power to throw out Android 18 to Carnivale. And then he can't use his move action because of Trunks st turning off the supercomputer. That brief education really helping him out there. We're going to see Kid J's go back to Kyvercraft 3. Again, really just wants to see a Shadow Game or a Millennium Item here. That's what Merrick really needs to get his ball rolling. And we're going to see the ring. We're going to see the ring. That would have been very helpful a turn or two ago, but better late than never. Unfortunately, the ring's ability to shuffle cards into the deck will not work when there's uh, nothing to shuffle into, which I think Kid J's is about to learn if he doesn't already know how it works. Because if he wants to shuffle in a Shizu or anyone, he has to shuffle the entire deck with Millennium Ring. I think that's probably what the judge is telling him right now. You cannot shuffle a card into a deck that doesn't currently exist. You can put things on top and bottom of a deck that doesn't currently exist. But to shuffle something in, there has to be one other card. So to make something to shuffle into, it would reshuffle the entire deck. So Millennium Ring basically just reshuffles the deck right now. It does nothing. 
Gohan and Crippling Blow, a, a one-strength Gohan body is worth more than a Crippling Blow right now, I would say. My word, this is one full-up cell territory. But look at all the power he has. If he can just inch his way to getting rid of Android 18, then he can really take off. If he can get to semi-perfect or showdown even. We're going to see the imperfect or the uh, instant transmission used to move multiform to Android 18 to give her a minus one. Android 18 is four strength, so there's going to have to be a lot of strength reduction on her. And Wako is going to get to clash with Gohan at the end of this turn. And he's checking out his discard for some reason. He's going to clash with Gohan and then end his turn. That'll be that. And we're back over to Kid Jays. He's got one Millennium item out. A Millennium Ring at Domino City would really hit the spot right now. Or even a Shadow Game. He could actually Shadow Game and defeat Yugi right here with Bakura plus Loomis. Now he's going to Disposable Pawn again. He's going to Disposable Pawn the Rare Hunter just to play the Rare Hunter. Totally fair. I still don't understand why he's going to Dual Tower for this. Why would you not go to Domino City? No, it's only one card with Rare Hunter. There you go. He's going to get Tomb Keepers. That could get him back something very useful. As well as thin his hand a bit more so that he can draw more cards because he really needs to draw. He really wants to... I mean, he really just wants to see Millennium Rod and Shadow Game right now. Is he going to defeat Yugi without Shadow Gaming him? Did he not use the Tomb Keeper's Destiny? Interesting. We're going to see Cell go back over to Carnival. He's going to get the minus one on 18. 18 is still two strength, however. And Cell is only one, so he won't be able to vanquish or clash with her, I mean. Fate is going to get... It's going to reveal three with Heart of the Cards, which is Taya, Tomb Keepers, and Tournament Bracket. One of these five cards is... Is, uh... A Shizu. So this is a good position for... For uh, Kid Jays, actually. I don't know why the clock was stopped. Must have been a rule clarification or something. We are going to see Taya thrown to Kabacraft just to stop that power gain and that vanquish there. Very understandable. And then Wako unable to clash with 18 because she is one strength stronger than her brother. Still going to see Kid Jays go over to Kabacraft. He wants to fate and he wants to play a card. He is not going to multi fate. Either didn't count for what that last. Oh, the last card was Mr. Satan. Definitely better to just full on fate. Going to get Gohan right back to cover Ginger Town. That's annoying for Cell to have to deal with. And then what card, if any, is Kid J's going to play here? What could it be? It'll be a trap card. Insanely likely to go off. And. Right now, he can't be faded, to my knowledge, unless... No, I'm pretty sure that Solar Flare is in the discard. And he's very likely to trigger this trap card. One of these five cards is a Shizu. Getting a Shizu out right now would be incredible for Kid Jays. Then he just really needs to draw into Millennium Rod or his other thing that I'm thinking of. He's going to throw out a Cell Junior over to Gohan. Shadow Game. That was the other card I was thinking of. And he's not going to defeat anything here because he doesn't want to trigger the Trap card, which is very fair. What is Kid J's going to do? If you go to Dual Tower, please have Shadow Game. The amount of times you've gone to Dual Tower over Domino City has hurt me. On a personal level. He's playing Arcana! Well, now he gets to defeat Kaiba and put a whatchamacallit in his hand. A Shadow Game in his hand, which is very good. They were both three. Loomis made it where Umbra was a three. And then Kaiba gives them both minus one. So they would have been... It would have... It adds up. The math works. That'll defeat Kaiba. He gets to gain two. He has put himself in danger of a tournament bracket playing Kaiba right back out. But he got himself the shadow game, which is what really matters. Because he's had Yugi prepared to be killed for a long time. He really needs the Yugi kill. Above all else. But also, it is... Almost guaranteed that Cell will be going to Carnival and fading here. Because he wants to get 18 out of here. As long as he has one strength reduction ability. Perfect barrier. Absorb. There he's going for the fate first. He gets to reveal three. Very likely to get a Shizu or a tournament bracket. He got a Shizu, but not a tournament bracket. I think there's one tournament bracket in here. This could be a guaranteed tournament bracket play to get Kaiba out. Which would really help Kid J's right now. 
He could guarantee Kaiba played at Kaiba Craft if he has an Innocent Facade or something similar. We're all going to see the Absorb. That'll be the last of Imperfect's extra power gain. And then he will get to clash with Android 18 to end his turn, reveal Semi-Perfect, and draw four. That will trigger Trap Card, which could hit the tournament bracket right now a little earlier than Kid J's would like. That is a little earlier than he'd like. That does mean Kaiba has to go to Dual Tower instead of getting to put him at Kaiba Craft, which is unfortunate. However, you definitely want to get Kaiba out here, even if it's at a less than ideal location. He's got Obelisk and Slifer in play. He has Yugi ready to be defeated with uh, Loomis and Bakura set up. And he has the Shadow Game in hand. So probably just going to like Fate and throw a Shadow Game on Yugi. Oh, he's actually going to go to Domino so that he gains some power instead, not worrying about fading right now. Cell is pretty loaded up on heroes, probably doesn't need to worry about it too much. He's going to play Odeon, actually, to get Millennium Rod into his hand, and set up Odeon to deal with either a Shizu or a Kaiba later. Probably Kaiba. What he really, really wants to do is kill either Yugi or Kaiba, and then play Millennium Rod, because then he can just clash with a Shizu. Once Merrick gets his third item between a combination of god cards and millennium items, that's when his game really takes off. That's when it really goes wild. We're going to see a perfect barrier discarded, appeal to pride discarded, discarding regen. Surely you play disappearances. Why would you discard disappearances instead of play it? Unless there's something else he really wants to play? He's discarding a lot of stuff. Yo, but like, why not play dis? Why didn't he play disappearances though? Am I losing my mind? I know Waka was good at this game. <laughs> Why not play Disappearances rather than discard it? There's the Shadow game. He is going to go for killing Yugi first. Very fair. Yugi is immediately set up to be killed while Kaiba is not. It needs another good ally over there. We're going to see Piccolo in the Time Chamber. And it will be Piccolo being played to block that discard at Carnival. No, to uh, block the gain and move at Ginger Town. Also fair. And that should be the end of Kid J's turn, if I am not mistaken. I don't think he can do anything else. Yep. Back over to Wako. What is Wako going to do here? He's debating. Thinking hard. He's having a bit of a rougher sell game than he did in the last one, I would say. He is going to end up going to Carnival to do some discarding and gaining a power. Oh, he's actually playing Android 17. That makes a lot of sense. He only has to get Android 17 minus one strength to be able to clash with him. We are going to see a full fate or a multi? A full fate with Heart of the Cards. Three cards revealed. Two tournament brackets and an anti-rule. So that is a dead fate. This is something that can happen when Merrick is already suffering heavily with just all of his heroes out. Although suffering might not be the right call here. He's about to get to kill Yugi. That'll be the end of Wako's turn. Is Kid J's going to go to Domino to gain power, or is he going to go to Dual Tower to get Yugi? And it looks like he is going to go to Dual Tower to get Yugi. He wants to be able to clash with Teya. He wants to hopefully soon get Obelisk to be able to clash with the three strengthers or get the Millennium Rod out. Really, does he have a uh, does he have a trap card to play? I think trap card is the only thing he could play here because the Shizu blocks his other zero costs. Only defeating Yugi that turn a bit of, a bit of a pain to only get to do that. Nothing else, but it's something. Hmm, a Kamihamiha. He can only spend three here for this, and it's to uh no, he can't do that. Trunks is three. Did I miss something? He shouldn't be able to kill Trunks there with Kamihamiha. He's two and Trunks is three. Yeah, yeah, okay. So I wonder if that's going to change his turn entirely. Because I don't really think he can do much at Tropical Islands. He's going to play Instant Transmission to move Multiform over. That will not give Trunks a minus one, however, because Trunks ignores items. Nope. Can't do that either. I've got to ask Wako how much Cell he's played. <laughs> I need to know. Wako very much debating. He's still he's just going to let it happen and move on. He's like, all right, my two plays didn't work out because I misunderstood Trunks, so I'm just going to let it fly. Totally fair. Happens to the best of us. 
Merrick going over to Domino. Cares more about gaining power right now than fading. He can't afford Millennium Rod, unfortunately. He's going to play a Cruel Puppeteer. He wants to get back probably... Probably wants to get himself a Shadow Game or just get an Innocent Facade or somewhat in his hand so that he can use it for a Shizu soon. Cell can get into Showdown here and start going crazy if he just has one Strength Reduction card or an Instant Transmission. He can actually just start popping off on all these heroes. Which is why Wako is still in a very good position despite the, the Trunks turn misplay. He must not have it, though, because he has no idea where to go. I mean, I'd probably move to Ginger Town to get that minus one on Piccolo and discard to draw the card I need to kill 17, but, I, I, you know, I'm not the best player at this game of all time. That might not be the right play. He's got a chess clock, so he can take his time here. We see Kid Jay's looking at his discard pile over there to see how that's going. Oh, but Wako is going to hit him with the triple fate. So that will let him play Bakura to Domino City, or he could take away that two power when Merrick has no power gain locations to go to, or he could take a peek at Merrick's hand and mess with that. He's honestly spoiled for choice. All three of these are really damaging cards right now. But in the end, he's going to go with Bakura, turn off the Millennium Ring, and double stack Domino. Honestly, I might have gone with the anti-rule there, but I think Bakura is also a very strong play. The thing is, is that uh, not this turn, but the following turn, that also gives him Cruel Puppeteer. Not this turn, but the following turn, Kid Jays can move away from Domino this turn, the next turn go to Domino, gain three, and play the Millennium Rod, then just clash with Bakura. Or my. But that's really, that's what Kid Jays really needs to do right now. He either needs to hard focus the Shadow Game on Kaiba, which he just got a Shadow Game to put on him, and get Kaiba out of here to get to 3 strength, or he needs to hard focus getting the Rod out. I'd probably focus on the Rod myself, but either option is understandable. That was the end of Wako's turn. He's going to go to Kaiba Craft 3. If he spins 2 on Shadow Game here, he can't. he's going to put a False God card to set up Odeon to take down Kaiba. The real question is going to be, does he go to Domino next turn to play the Millennium Rod, or to put the Shadow Game on Kaiba? I don't know what the right option is. I would probably go straight for Millennium Rod, but I'm really interested to see which decision Kid Jays makes. Not playing Krillin, instead doing the two plus ones. I think that's fair. I'd honestly probably put it on Piccolo here. Yeah, totally fair. I feel like I would have made that same play. Piccolo is very annoying at three strength. Very annoying. And of course, now Android 17 has to be dealt with more. That also covers up that top move for longer. Really, Wako needs to get Trunks out of here. So he can start using Supercomputer and his double move shenanigans on 17. But he's going to go over to Ginger Town. He's going to use a Strength Reduction on Piccolo. He's going to use a Kamehameha. This can only kill Tien. Nope, you cannot do that. I really don't think Wako understands what Kamehameha does. I think he thinks that Kamehameha is a... Like a defeat hero thing, not a clash thing. It is a clash thing. He's going to play Disappearances this time to gain like 8. One, two, he's going to gain 6. So he goes up to 22 here. He's got all the power in the world, but he's got a weak in 17. He needs to draw some strength reduction and then probably probably hit Trunks with it first and then hit 17 with it second, honestly. Back over to Kid Jays. Will he do the Shadow Game or the Millennium Rod? I would Millennium Rod here. Absolutely. And then just clash with Bakura or Mai. I honestly think that's the right play. This, this gets the Chaos stamp of approval. Because you're going to have to go over to Kaiba's location at Dual Tower to vanquish him at some point soon anyway, and now you can clash with the Shizu when he does that as well. Well, he'd be able to do that by vanquishing Kaiba and getting the extra one as well, but if he has to go there earlier, he can do it now, and now he can really start cleaning his territory, because he has heroes everywhere that he can now just be clashing with. Solar Flare on Trunks again. It does let him start doing the multiform shenanigans, so honestly, not a bad play. Still shocked that he wouldn't open up the arena with it. Gets to multi-form, get that minus one on 17. So now he's in position to get to showdown. If he can just hit 17 with any reduction, he's going to throw out a reconnaissance with his other play. If Wako gets into showdown, he can really start to 
destroy these heroes with the sheer amount of power he has. I don't even know if there are four heroes for Cell games to play. Gohan, Krillin, Android 16, Mr. Satan, there are exactly four. If I didn't miss one there. But he can really start to run away with it. Is he going to defeat Kaiba here? Without getting the Shadow game? Oh, I think he's just clashing with the Shizu and ending his turn. I think he was looking at his discard earlier to decide if he would want to do that or not. And yeah, he's just clashing with the Shizu and ending his turn. Well, I mean, Waka was definitely going to fade him here. So hopefully he doesn't luck right back into a Shizu. And absorb on 17, so he will be able to clash with 17 and get into showdown. He's going to have to deal with basically every single hero he's got, which could be rough. But he can start getting on it. He did not get a Shizu. He got Anti-Rule and Tomb Keepers, which is going to be basically a Force Tomb Keepers. Anti-Rule does nothing. So that is going to reveal Kid J's hand. He gets to discard two of these and then probably put something stupid like Sadistic Glee in his hand. Although Sadistic Glee might actually help. I'd probably... What card would I give him back here? I'd probably give him another Cruel Puppeteer. If the other Cruel Puppeteer is in his discard. He's going to let him keep the Rare Hunter, which he could have the Rare Hunter pull a Shizu. It's a 1 in 6 chance. It's not likely, but it's not impossible. Also, we're probably going to see... He's either going to go to Domino to clash with Mai, or he's going to go to Kybercraft to Fate and clash with Teya, because Teya doesn't have any heroes to target. He's going to give him Loomis. Interesting. I know that Kybercraft 3 would just be a clash in Fate turn, but honestly, with the chance of getting a plus one with Time Chamber on some of these heroes, like Piccolo or Goku right now, I think that's very worth Kid J's time to just go clash with Teya while there are no heroes in the discard, and get the... Uh, Get the whatever. Get the fade off. Because all the heroes are going to be in play here. So, I mean, there's a potential of a dead fate with, like, getting uh, Senzu or Crippling Blow. But boy, howdy, it would really, really help out with... Now, you shouldn't put the Senzu in the discard because you're going to have some weird stuff going on here. you got to reshuffle while the Senzu is still out. Yeah, you can't put the Senzu. You need to reshuffle that. There you go. But there, there's potential for Dead Fate. It depends on how this works. But getting a, a time chamber once all these heroes are out could be really strong. And if a hero is right here, then time chamber is guaranteed. It is not. All right, well, now there's a chance. Because it's going to be... Oh, you pulled in one too many heroes there, Falk. There's a 40% chance. Five cards here. Two Crippling Blows, one Sensu Bean, and then a two time chambers, but he might wait until Cell kills at least a hero because then he can send Sue being that hero right back. I've never seen Cell in Showdown with all of his heroes before. I'm really interested to see how this plays out. Look at Android 16 do a little do -si -del. So obviously he's planning to go to Tropical Island on his turn. Sorry if you heard me setting down my drink on my table there. He's planning to go to Tropical Island to kill what's-his-face. We're going to see Kid J's elect not to worry about whatchamacallit. And the, she, he was looking to see if he wanted to Millennium Ring a Shizu, but a Shizu is already in there. He gets to play a card and he gets to clash with Mai this turn, which is a strong turn. He's going to hope for the 1 in 6 chance of a Shizu. That could make be the game decider. He did not get it. I still think it probably would have been better for him to get Taya out of here, but he can just Millennium Rod Taya. At his leisure. So it's not that big of a deal. He has Odeon set up to defeat Kaiba at any time. He really just wants to get a shadow game first. And then, then he can clash with Joey and open back up his top fate. He probably really wants to do that. Getting his top fate back open to further slow down Cell. Is Wako really not going to go take care? Oh, he's going he's gonna to Kamehameha. He can only spend three on Kamehameha here specifically to kill 16. Nope, Krillin's out. Goku's at 5. So he is going to go to Tropical Island. That makes a lot more sense. Going to throw out the Cell Jr. over there. Probably move Multiform. He put Trunks here, though, so he can't hit any of these guys with Multiform. Going to see an instant transmit on Multiform. I think I understand Wako's problem now. I don't think Wako has ever seen... 
such a heavy hero game on Cell either, and so he's being thrown off by how many heroes, like, having to remember Goku's effect, having to remember Krillin's, 16's, and Trunks's all at the same time. So he did an instant transmit on Piccolo there, and then he's moving multiform normally, or he's deciding not to move multiform. He's not sure what he wants to do. Gonna move Time Machine instead. That makes more sense. Get back a card you really need to start killing these heroes. He's gonna get to Clash with 16 here. 16 is only at 3, even with Krillin out. And there goes 16, so now he can start clashing willy-nilly. But he really also wants to get rid of Krillin, so he can start clashing with Vegeta and Goku. Is it uh, Shadow Game on Kaiba? Alright, so that's going to be the end of Kaiba there, using the Vanquish with Odeon. He'll also get to gain two and do a move action here if he wants to for any reason. But he has got two God Cards guaranteed on lock. He just has to get a Shizu played. He just has to find a way to play a Shizu. And in a pinch moment, he could discard... Yugi or Kaiba to get rid of Heart of the Cards if he really feels like he needs to. We're going to see Wako go straight for a Fate. He has a 60% chance of pulling a Shizu here. He's also going to throw out an Appeal to Pride now that Merrick is doing a lot of clashing. That makes a lot of sense. Get some hero movement. A Shizu? He didn't get a Shizu! Oh, baby! That could be the game decider. He can, he can play Mai here and set a Shizu where she is with the, the card movement. Yeah, he is going to play Mai. So those cards all get discarded. Now he's going to have to take these two cards, shuffle this and take one more card, and then set the top three however he wants. One of these two cards we know is a Shizu. We don't know what is in Merrick's hand. I think he should have an Innocent Facade either in these two cards or in the back. Also, now I think about it... Uh, Outside of a Solar Flare play, there's no way that Wako can fate on his turn. So, this might be that not getting a Shizu there could decide the game, because it might just be guaranteed or near guaranteed that between some disposable pawns, innocent facades, etc., even if Wako put a Shizu as the third card down here, Merrick could guarantee getting the, uh, getting it. Words. Getting a Shizu. It just depends on what's in his hand. We're going to see Krillin come right back. Far more useful than a crippling blow. It's going to make it pretty tough on Wako. He really wants to keep up, fa uh, keep up? He wants to keep up fate pressure right now. Does he have a card to reveal something from the fate deck? Oh, he's going to use the Millennium Rod to take control of Taya. Also very fair. And then gain one. So Kaibacraft is very well defended now, which is nice. Not being able to try and force the Shizu out is hurtful, though. Because he's not getting... Oh, he does! He does have a Rare Hunter! And he he gained the one from Kybercraft to be able to play it. That's perfect. Anti-Rule, he gains two here. That's really good. And now, as long as he has another card... If he has Innocent Facade... I think... I don't know if he went by all three already. Either this is Innocent Facade, or he has it in his hand. And I don't think there's a Solar Flare available for Wako to be able to fate here. So that might be a guaranteed Ashizu, which he can play straight to himself and then clash to get into Showdown. Tropical Island. Surprised he's not going to Arena anyway to kill Trunks and Tien, honestly. Because he definitely doesn't need power. I don't know how many cards he feels like he needs to be playing right now. But even with the Krillin plus one, he could get Tien and Trunks out of here. And I know that they could come right back with Fates and whatnot. But he really just needs to... I mean, right now, anything comes back with Fates because of how small the Fate deck is. He really just needs to get to work on... He just needs to kill as many heroes a turn as he possibly can. What are we going to see from Cell here? He's going to get Explosive Coercion for six. Looking for cards that he can use. Probably won't sell... He took Kamehameha. Probably won't sell Junior here. So Junior is very useful in this scenario. Deciding between it and Perfect Barrier. Perfect Barrier would also allow him to do a lot of killing on Goku and Vegeta when he goes to Arena. So he is going to take the Perfect Barrier. Honestly, probably the better play. He really wants to get Goku and Vegeta out of here ASAP. That'll really help him start to pop off. I believe that was all of his actions. Does he still have a move left? He might still have a move left. Whether he does or doesn't, his turn is over. Back over to Merrick. I'm actually uh, 
I'm kind of rooting for Merrick here. I want to see him pull off this win. He's in a good position for it. No, you can't do that because Taya's already controlled. You can only Millennium Rod one at a time. He has to get rid of Taya some, somehow, some way to be able to Millennium Rod, Joey. But what he really needs to do is play a card to get a Shizu right now. Does he not have it? He's going to play out Cruel Puppeteer. He must not have the card to get a Shizu. That really hurts. Not being able to get a Shizu here is killer. I must have miscounted a... Putting Bandit Keith at my Interesting. I must have miscounted a Innocent Facade earlier. Or this is the Innocent Facade and he just got super unlucky. Yeah, definitely Cell is going to fade here because he knows it's a Shizu. That's not the end of the world, though. Okay, we're going to see a, a single Kamehameha. Is he going to... He's going to do that just to kill Krillin? I guess he really wants to discard this turn. Then he gets to fate. There's a Shizu. And he does also reveal the tournament bracket with Heart of the Cards. The good news here is that he can clash with the Shizu. Because he's at four strength. So he can immediately get her defeated and then maybe get a tournament bracket the following turn. Because Cell is super fate locked right now unless he gets his hands on, whatchamacallit, I'd probably double stack Pharaoh's Tomb. Domino is also fair. Stopping the double play. Discarding Disappearances. Discarding Absorb. Yeah, he really... That's why he did the Kamehameha. He doesn't need any of these power gaining cards right now. Oh, he did trigger Cruel Puppeteer with playing a Shizu. I mean, right now he probably wants Innocent Facade. Or Shadow Game Joey. Shadow Gaming Joey would also be really strong for him. He did take Innocent Facade. To prove that he took an effect and he didn't cheat and take something else. I just realized how low... Dude, this game has been going way longer than I realized. Waka was actually really on time. What is with Kid J's? Why does Kid J's make his opponents take up so much more time than him? Mm, you don't... Umbra isn't in play. You don't have the strength for that. He thought Umbra was in play. But Umbra is not, so he can't get the Vanquish there. He can't sadistically. Because the Shizu is in play. <laughs> it's so, so many missed effects here. He should really go to Pharaoh's Tomb and Clash. Clash and discard. That's what he should do, in my humble opinion. If he doesn't have the Shadow Game to put on Joey, why would you Innocent Facade here? I'm confused. What does this accomplish? I mean, it'll let you play Bakora To your location? Which doesn't really do anything? I mean, yeah. That turns off your Millennium Items. An interesting play. He's going to fate and get out Android 16 here. So now Cell can't clash on his turn. Kid J's might actually be playing for the timeout. <laughs> we're going to, you know, we're going to have to have a serious talk with Kid J's if he ends up winning another game by timeout. There will be something, there's something sketchy going on at that point. We're going to see Wako move over Time Machine. Now that he's at six minutes, six and a half, he really does need to start playing faster. He can absolutely still win this if he just, you know, ever actually goes and kills some of the people at the arena, which is what Cell is supposed to do. He just hasn't gotten around to that yet. All right, he can spend three here to clash with 16. That's his only option. So there goes 16, probably because he really wants to go to Arena on his turn. He wants to go to Arena and start punching all these people in the mouth before Krillin comes back. And what are we going to see from Kid J's here? He's going to go over to Domino City. Gain three. He's going to throw out a trap card. And he's just going to clash with the Shizu on his turn. Okay, I assume there's at least one tournament bracket in here that can pull, uh... They can pull a Shizu. And he is hoping that... I mean... He's just gonna fate. Like, if I was Cell, even if I did want to go to Arena and start making progress here... Oh, they're uh, resolving Appeal to Pride. Because Merrick clashed. 
I mean, I would appeal to pride one of the heroes to the carnival and then go to the carnival to play a Shizu again. I would move Goku over. I would move Goku over, clash with him at carnival and fate. He's gonna move Piccolo to arena. Well, everyone's at the arena. They're all there. And he's going to go to Arena and not fate. Oh, maybe changing his mind? I mean, he can he can kill a couple of people here. He can kill Goku and uh, maybe... Oh, no. <laughs> Only Goku dies there. So that's the Vanquish with Cell Jr. on Goku. Could we see a Kamehameha here as well for six? That is going to trigger Trap Card. Will he get the tournament? He did not get tournament bracket. He gets Tomb Keepers. I mean, he has an Innocent Facade in the discard. I would absolutely reveal my hand, discard the two worst cards, and take Innocent. Like, all all he has to do to win is play a Shizu. He, he need Yeah, get rid of, like, Disposable and Glee here. Maybe Loomis. He's gonna get rid of... Yeah, Disposable and Glee. And then add Innocent Facade back into his hand. Yep, yep. So he's in a he's in a guaranteed position to get a Shizu, I think, in Inter Showdown. Okay, we're gonna see a special beam cannon. Is he gonna pay all six for Gohan? I think a Senzu Bean is coming up, isn't it? I would not kill Gohan here. He's gonna spin two for Piccolo, but that's just gonna give Piccolo a minus one. And indeed, that is what he will do. I mean, at this point, he has to play for Do you not clash at the end of his turn? At this point, he has to play for the self-destruct. Which is why I, we're definitely going to see Senzu being Goku here. Yeah. Immediately play Goku. Time Chamber is not worth it. Play Goku to stop the... To make him have to work for the... No, don't play Goku there! He's just going to go there and clash with him and then do the self-destruct next turn. You madman. You need to put him in Arena. Or I'm insane. It's always possible that I'm wrong. That's always a possibility. If Cell wins this by self-destruct, I'm going to lose my mind. Like, I'm actually going to lose my mind. He can't do that. Bakura is in play. Bakura stops that. Yeah, Bakura stops that. He shouldn't need to. Is one of these not a tournament bracket? Are all three tournament brackets in the discard? He's playing a rare hunter instead of Innocent Facade? He got the tournament bracket anyway, so it doesn't matter. And then he can immediately clash with the Shizu, so that'll be Showdown. It's possible a Shizu could be replayed, but that doesn't really matter. As long as Kaiba and Yugi can't be replayed, he doesn't care. As long as Yugi can't be replayed, he doesn't care. Because he can clash with Kaiba or a Shizu being replayed. In fact, I'd probably ditch Kaiba right now to get rid of Heart of the Cards. If I was him. To just immediately fix that. I don't know if Wako has, whatchamacallit, in his hand. If he has self-destruct. But if Wako has self-destruct in his hand, he ba he wins on his turn. No, he doesn't because he can't do the Vanquish and the other thing at the same time. He's going to Kamehameha. No, he still wins on his turn if he has it in his hand. He's going to clash with Goku at the end of his turn, and then he just goes and self-destructs. Playing Goku to the bottom fate was a major misplay, IMO. I didn't see what those cards were. Was it anti-rule and two Tomb Keepers? Or maybe a tournament bracket? Either way, he's doing Tomb Keepers. Is this game? No. Oh, it is game because there's a rare hunter at my. Yeah, that's game. Merrick wins. He uses Bandit Keith and rare hunter to kill my, and then he clashes with Joey. That's game over. So we will be going to a third game. I really want to know if Wako has the thing in his hand. If he has self-destruct. Yeah, just activate Keith and then go clash with Joey. Yep, that kills Mai and then you clash with Joey. GG, well played. What in, What a game. Why are you playing trap card? You won. <laughs> you activated my trap card. I killed Joey. That is game. Merrick defeats Cell. Very good, very good. So that'll be a victory for Kid Jays, unless I'm missing something. Nah, we're good, we're good. Kid Jays wins, so that's one game for him, and one game for Wako, so we'll be going to a third game between the two players. He did have self-destruct, oh man. That Goku play, that Goku misplay almost cost Kid Jays that entire game.
that was that was it, it's also because of the fate whiff i think i don't know if there was a way that that fate could have not whiffed but uh i wasn't paying attention to the setup with the like the shadow games and the the rod and whatnot but holy cow that was surprisingly close my word but uh that is a win for kid Jays and a win for wako so we will be going on to a third game to decide who the winner is we're gonna have another very long video all right, game three to see who will move on to the final four out of Kid Jays and Waco. Waco lost last game, so he is the starting player. He did not decide to be the secondary player. He's going to ban Gendo again, giving Kid Jays one last opportunity to play Tetsuo. This this could be Kid Jays one and only opportunity to play Tetsuo because if he loses this game, he's out. He's going to ban Father instead of Cell. Will we see Waco do three Cell games in a row? I'm pretty sure I'm giving him sell on the thumbnail either way. Who will Kid Jays play for this third game? And then Wako gets to counter pick into him. Is he going to pick Tetsuo? Is he going to take this one opportunity to play his main? He's thinking really hard about it, whoever he's going to play. He's going to play Merrick again! Alright. Is Wako just going to play Cell again? Why? I don't know why he shuffled there. <laughs> I thought he was going to random for a second. I was going to be like, holy cow. This guy's insane. It's going to be Light. All right, I believe Light is Waco's main. Deciding not to do Cell the whole way through. So we're going to see Merrick versus Light here. I think this is a pretty even matchup. It's very... Not easy. I don't want to say easy, but it's very doable to fate lock light and even to do stuff like matsuda and mogi to move him to his bottom fate to like super fate lock him and merrick likes of words merrick likes fate locking his opponents light really enjoys fate locking his opponents as well because it stops them from preventing him from doing paranoid prep or not paranoid prep uh patient plotting is what i meant to say they both they're both double p's what was i supposed to do but uh he really likes guaranteeing shinigami eyes and patient plotting and Merrick is, again, like Light, he's not easy to fate lock, but he's very fate lockable, I feel like. It, it's not unusual for a Merrick game to have, like, Yugi or Kaiba or Joey dropped at the Pharaoh's Tomb, and then they just sit there for, like, four or five turns. It happened in the last game that we just had. Joey sat on Pharaoh's Tomb for a very long amount of time. So, I feel like this might be one of the more even matchups. They also have a good... Both characters have a good bit of RNG, Merrick, I think, is more RNG-focused on if he draws out the god card holders at good times or not. But Light also depends on a little bit of RNG on what names he gets when and what heroes come out, if the heroes match his name tokens or not. Because that decides if Light has to play a game with Amnesia where he's buried with heroes, or if Light gets to play a game where he kills things as they arrive. And I do think that most Light players prefer a kill characters as they arrive approach. We're going to see a fate from Light. He's going to immediately get Yugi. <laughs> However, Bakura going to the discard pile is actually pretty nice for for Kid Jays because he has a good opportunity to play Bakura out on his side if he gets a tournament bracket. But turn one Yugi on Pharaoh's Tomb is immediately going to go quite in, in Light's favor, I would say. And then we're going to see a lot of discarded cards from Wako. And that will be the end of his turn. What are we going to see from Merrick here? He's going to go over to Domino City. Does he have the rod? I would absolutely go to Domino and play the rod here instantly. I would do it in a heartbeat. But he is going to go to Kaibacraft to Fate instead. He's going to get Nier and Ide. Nier doesn't really do anything here, unfortunately. Neither does Ide. They're both basically just covers. But covering yellow box is very important. As we can tell by Wako immediately going there, he wanted to use that location while he had the opportunity. Having near out is also good for accusations. Can come in really handy later. Are we seeing a rare hunter, or is Kid Jays changing his mind? He's going to Innocent Facade instead. Uh, a tournament bracket or a god card holder is great here. Ashizu is amazing here. That is very good. He has to miss the tournament bracket on Bakura, but getting Ashizu instantly is fantastic. Absolutely play her to Kybercraft 3. He's going to play her to Domino. To each their own. I almost always play them to Kybercraft 3, unless I have a scenario where I think it could be better to do otherwise. But you know, maybe that's maybe that's a mistake by me. We're going to see two paranoid preps. 
Getting all of the deck shuffling. Uh, this is going to be a Bakura play to Copycraft 3, I assume. Yep, Bakura straight to Copycraft 3. Ooh, man. If Kid Jays can get an early rod or ring and then just get some allies set up for a Shizu, or get a... Rather, get a... um, Whatever it is I'm thinking of. That was the end of his turn. He didn't do anything else. Or get a... Uh, an early shadow game on a Shizu. This could really start to swing in Merrick's favor. But he has to get some early Millennium items to really make that happen. And he can't let a Shizu stay out too long because the Shizu is going to stop all of his, his discarding effects. We're going to see a rare Hunter thrown out, hoping for a lucky Kaiba. Oh my goodness! That could make all the difference! Do not put Kaiba at Dual Tower. I'll die. Okay, good. Oh, baby! Now, now begins digging for Millennium Items and Shadow Games. Setting up allies is also good. There's a lot of really good stuff that that could start happening for Kid J's here. That's the RNG of Merrick. We're going to see a social manip after the hero move on Nier to get him over to Light's apartment. That also opens up Yellow Box. Going to get Aizawa's name. And that'll be the end of Wako's turn. This is, uh, this is a really good setup for Kid J's. He doesn't have allies out to really deal with these guys right now, but if he can just quickly get some shadow games and some weak allies thrown out, he's going to shadow game a Shizu. Yeah, honestly, uh, amazing play. We're going to see both paranoid preps trigger here. I think they have to reveal the cards first. Yep, so they reveal complications and mellow. A whiffed mellow here is... We're, we're getting some lucky fates for both players. Whiffed near followed by a whiffed mellow. I mean, they're out there for accusation now, which is good. Don't get me wrong. But obviously, you'd rather have them come out later when they can just immediately be useful instead of need accusations. Because accusations also gives you less control over where you play them. Mellow is also very circumstantial on accusation actually playing out well. Yeah, complications does nothing. You're just playing Mellow to block Yellow Box here, presumably. And indeed, he will. Which honestly is still plenty good for Kid J's. Uh, like... Getting that early raw and obelisk out, all he wants to do is just slow down fates on himself and rush his objective. Obviously, he doesn't want to ignore light enough that light can just go ham, can just pop off. But he really, really... Oh, two patient plottings and they are guaranteed, I believe. There's no way to get Yugi off of Pharaoh's tomb. Th this is going to be a game. I'm actually... Oh, man. This is the most exciting game out of this match so far, I would say. I am super pumped to see how this plays out. Are we going to see an ally or an item? The Millennium Rod. Honestly, super worth. He just really needs to get ready to be able to clash. He wants to defeat a Shizu and get the rod in the ring out ASAP. That will let him pop off. That double patient plotting is amazing. Oh, it went into the name tokens. There we go. So that's two names for light off of patient plotting of all things. He gets Mogi and Watari. Didn't get Nier or Mellow, which hurts. But my word, this is uh <laughs> this is a game, ladies and gentlemen. I, like, it's going to be a rush game for both players, and I have no idea who's going to win this exchange. I think it's literally going to come down to the timing of getting Raw and Millennium Ring for Merrick. I think that Light can win faster overall, but it's all dependent on, on the timing of Merrick's fates. Probably going to see Joey to dual tower here, yeah. And then hoping to draw... Heart of the Cards. Tournament Bracket. That also works. Throw Taya on top of Domino City. So, all very covered up now. And Bakora is out, so no Millennium Rod shenanigans allowed. Yeah, going to Kaivacraft to hit a fate. Wants to stop the Shinigami Eyes. Can't let Light get too out of control. Oh, Mogi is great. Well, Mogi could have been better if uh, Task Force was open. Or if uh, Light wasn't at Task Force, I mean. Yeah, you don't want to move Light here. You want to move Mikami or probably Nier back to Yellow Box. I'd probably move Nier back to Mellow Box myself. Mellow Box? <laughs> back to Yellow Box. Hey, this video is already like an hour and 45 minutes. Cut me some slack. I'd, I'd move Nier back to Yellow Box. This is what I would do here. I don't know if that's the right play or not. He might actually... I think he's electing to not use Mogi because it is a May, which is honestly also fair. I don't think I would have moved Mikami. I probably would have Nier or not used Mogi, but I really would have moved Nier. He's going to move over to Yagami anyway, gain three to do a social manip to get that fourth name token from Mogi. 
And he gets Nier's name, so he'll be able to kill Nier on his coming turn. What are we going to see from Kid J's? He needs to get allies to Ishizu. She has the shadow game. He needs to get allies on Ishizu, then he can clash with Taya. And then he just needs to get Millennium Rod or get a shadow game on Kaiba to be able to get to three. Or not Millennium Rod, Millennium Ring. I mean, he's definitely going to move. Unless his hand is so bad that he needs to discard at Pharaoh's Tomb, he definitely moves to Domino here. Oh, we had a misclick on the clock that stopped the timer. Very weirdly. That happens sometimes. Uh, are we going to do a quick time rewind to fix that? I don't know if they know how to fix this or not. He's gaining three. They're just letting it fly. Oh, yeah, time rewind. There we go. There we go. Didn't time rewind enough. Do it again. There we go. All right, we're good. We're good. And did anything change? Mm, nope, I think we're good. Nier's name is out. Yep, yep, yep. We're back. We're back in it. We're just at the start of Merrick's turn. There we go. Quick little fix. Probably won't remember to jump cut that one. Don't think it really warrants one. He's going to go to Domino to gain three. What is he going to do? He's going to play Bakura's deal? He can't do that because Ashizu is in play. He can't do that. Ashizu stops Bakura's deal from being played. I hope Falk notices. Because that will heavily change how this plays out. Mm, nope, that was a very illegal play, and I don't think the judge noticed, so... We're just going to keep going. He'll get penalty minutes later if they realize that that was highly illegal. Also, he didn't discard... What What just happened? When you Bakura's deal, you have to... Did I miss something? You have to discard the Millennium Rod to do that. He wouldn't have been able to clash. That, that was a very illegal play. But I'm not a judge, so it's not my place to fix it. I, I'm very confused as to how Falk let that go by. I'm amazed that no one caught it. Or, or I, I could be wrong. Maybe I missed something. I really don't think I did. They have it upside down. Nice. It looked like he used Bakura's deal to discard Millennium Rod and defeat Ashizu, which he couldn't do because Ashizu stops that. He didn't discard the Rod when he did it, which is also illegal. And then he clashed with Teo when he should have only had Raw and been at one strength. So the integrity of this game is incredibly called into question now, but, it, you know, we're still going. That's going to be the Mogi kill with his ability. Killing Mogi over near. Interesting choice. Matsuda, when Light is already at Task Force, really hurts. That's unfortunate. Probably still play Matsuda here, though, because he doesn't have Matsuda's name. Mm, yeah, Aizawa's was just going to get murdered. As will Nier. One or the other. I think we saw Death Note discarded earlier, so that's not going to come out. And then is Kid J is playing a card? Can he? Well, since Ishizu is gone, even though she shouldn't be gone right now, he can Disposable Pawns. He's just going to use it to replay the Rare Hunter to pull a card from the top, hoping for an anti-rule, I assume. He's going to get Tomb Keepers. That could also be very useful. Going to reveal his hand and then discard. Uh, probably Disposable and... Oh, no, Trap Card. Yeah, Trap Card and Cruel makes sense here. I disrespect Disposable Pawns a lot more than I should. That probably is the right play. I usually definitely trade out Cruel Puppeteer with Tomb Keepers because I would use Cruel Puppeteer to do whatever Tomb Keepers does for me in the first place most times. Gonna see Wako go gain two. Is he gonna use his move here? He'd probably, probably kill Aizawa and move near to Task Force would be my assumption. So he can open up those Shinigami eyes. I kind of hope that uh, I don't want to root for either player. On one hand, I want to see Merrick win because I love when Merrick wins because, you know, he's the roulette character, quotation marks. But I, uh... Oh, they got rid of Millennium Rod. Oh, did they realize that it was uh, illegal? Yeah, bringing out the penalty minutes. They can't really fix it now, so penalty minutes is the only thing they could do. That was a pretty big penalty. I wouldn't be surprised if we see, like, two or three here. Or he's going to give them four. Yeah, honestly, he got a god card that he shouldn't have gotten and got to defeat a hero he shouldn't have gotten to defeat at, a un at like, an ideal time. Four minutes seems really fair for that. 
It's going to be near killed rather than Aizawa with his ability, and then he's set up to go to Task Force to get a name from Mikami. And we are back over to Kid J's. Well, he's only got 20 minutes left. <laughs> Roughly, due to his penalty minutes. I would definitely give up four minutes for the weird play that he got to do. We're going to see him go to Domino. Does he have the the ring? Is he going to get the ring out here? Losing the rod, like... Putting aside that it was an illegal move, I would have not tried to Bakura's deal because not having the rod when you're this loaded up on heroes just seems super negative. Like, this is, this is hard to deal with. Honestly, I think that play might have, in the long run, hurt him more than help him, but I don't know. That's that's some major theory crafting that, you know, you'd have to be way better than me at the game at to understand. He is going to get his fifth name here, Light is, and he gets to kill Aizawa. He doesn't get to kill Mello yet. He gets to throw out a Fate. He's going to get Taya again, or Tomb Keepers. Going to throw out Taya On Pharaoh's Tomb? That's fair. I probably would have put her at Domino. But he knows the Millennium Rod isn't coming back quite anytime soon, so. Ooh, a Desperate Gambit. Yeah, I'd Desperate Gambit here. He just really, like... You're, you're set on killing heroes, I feel like. Oh, he's gonna play Kiyomi instead. That's also a very fair play. But I, uh... If I, if I was Wako, whoo, baby, I would be going so hard. Yeah, probably playing Kiyomi first is a much better idea because getting rid of Aizawa here, the fate might have stopped Aizawa from dying. We're gonna see an immediate fate here. It would have been complications, actually, so a Desperate would have been great there, but there was no way to know that. Uh, probably, oh man, accusing Mello here gets rid of Mikami, but also opens up the top fate, which blows. Complications could discard Battle of Wits, or Misinfo, I'd probably discard Battle of Wits, though. He's going to accuse Mello to get rid of Mikami, fair enough. I think this game has swung, that double patient plotting was the main reason, but I think this game swung very heavily in Light's favor as more of the fates and the moves have played out, because Kid Jays is just absolutely bogged down. He has no setup. He doesn't have the Millennium Rod. I think Kid Jays was in a way better position when he had the Millennium Rod, and he was getting close to getting a Shizu. Now that getting a Shizu, but not having the Rod, I think is a much weaker position for him, because he really just wants to get to three strength, because he needs to start being able to clash with Bakura and, and Mai and whatnot. He couldn't have used the Millennium Rod to take control of anyone because of Bakura, but he just needs it for the strength. And we are going to see Wako go to his newly opened yellow box warehouse. Is he going to Desperate Gambit after fading? Oh, he's going to spin one to play Last Resort. And then discard Kira Colt. And Misa. Is he going to fate? I don't see why. Well, he's also going to discard Chief Yagami. He just really wants to get hold of probably, I don't know if he has, a, I think he used both social manips, but God of the New World should be in here. He probably just wants to go hard for God of the New World. Getting rid of two power here is, I think, the right play. Well, Tomb Keepers can really suck, but I I, I think, I think either or is a good play. I, I would take either options there. Merrick is really struggling right now. Taking away power makes him struggle more, but also messing with his hand can make him struggle more. It looks like, uh... Whatchamacallit was the better play because now he's struggling with uh, having to discard. He's going to get the heart of the cards, which he'll want to discard here. Oh, he did trigger misinfo with his discards. So Mellow can be moved. I don't know. Uh, Task Force is kind of where you want Mellow, to be honest. I probably wouldn't move him. Last Resort is going to be thrown out. I don't think we've seen any of the Justice plans go by. One of them might have been discarded or both of them could have been discarded earlier. But I think a Justice Planned is very likely to happen soon to get that sixth name. I really think that if Wako just discards aggressively enough, he can run away with this right now. Merrick is not in a good position to keep up Fate Pressure at all. And Light is in a good position to Fate willy-nilly, kinda. And he has almost no heroes out. And he has five names, so he can kill most heroes that show up. I don't think we've seen Watari yet. Watari can be killed when he shows up. Mello is already out. That's one of the only names he's missing. We're going to see him go to Light's apartment, gain two, throw a Shinigami Eye on Kiyomi. And that's probably going to be, that's going to be his turn. Yeah, setting himself up to get that sixth name, hopefully. We know he still has the Desperate Gambit in his hand to get a name at any time, and I don't think we've seen the other Desperate Gambit. It could show up any time. There's Watari and L. Probably, probably play Watari here and put L on top, but also just playing L is really strong. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. 
I don't know what the best option was there. I don't think that... I, I think that Merrick is just in a really, really bad position. I really don't see him bringing this back. It, of course, it's always possible. I've said similar before and been proven wrong. But, I mean, it's it's going to be hard. It's going to be difficult. I don't think he has a tournament bracket option here. He's just gaining two power. Yeah. I think... Are all the heroes in play? Taya, Mai, Joey, Bakura, Kaiba, Yugi, Ishizu? I think they all are? I might be forgetting one. What are we going to see from Wako here? Does he have a social manip or a god of a new world? Or he might just go here in Desperate Gambit, to be honest, to really set him up for power next turn. I don't think that'd be a bad play at all. God of the new world, social manip. Yeah, get that guaranteed sixth name. Now he really wants to get to a reshuffle. The only thing that he really needs to worry about is imprisoned and he doesn't even really have to worry about it because if battle of wits is triggered he's safe and merrick is not triggering last resort anytime soon so he's like yeah i, th I think wako might just have this game on lock it's looking very in his favor going to pharaoh's tomb i guess he really needs to discard again his hand must just suck oh, he's gonna play disposable pawn to replay the rare hunter and get a tournament bracket strange there's i don't think there's anything in the fate deck that can help him right now he needs to play allies he needs to discard to get allies and get um get millennium ring so he can at least clash with Taya. and then what are we gonna see here from wako probably gonna move l off of kiyomi to open up that shinigami eye yep 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 just as planned so now he's a little bit in danger of imprisoned but he can also, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, he's like, with Desperate Gambit in hand, the only thing that stops him from getting to showdown is Imprisoned, which I think one of these cards is Imprisoned, to be fair. So very likely that he gets hit with it. Now Merrick has to go to Kybercraft. If he doesn't go to Kybercraft here, he's basically surrendering. Was Mellow the only name he didn't have? That sucks. He didn't get Imprisoned, that might be game. Because he can get to showdown with Shinigami plus Desperate Gambit here. Yeah, not getting imprisoned there. I mean, I, I already felt like Wako probably had this on lock, but now I feel like he super does. That was super lucky. This has been some of the luckiest setup for both characters. It ended up going very south for Kid J's, unfortunately. Another false god card on... Uh, why would you put them on two separate rare hunters instead of putting them both on the same rare hunter? Interesting. Well, we're going to see Wako go over here. Shinigami eyes out a name, and then presumably he's going to... Desperate Gambit to get into Showdown. And then he just needs to get started on killing. Which he's about to reshuffle, so he could very... With Kiyomi out especially, he could very quickly get his way to Rem and Deletes and whatnot. There's the Desperate Gambit, so that is guaranteed Showdown. Wait, did he discard Desperate Gambit? I really don't see a reason why he wouldn't Desperate Gambit here. He knows this is Imprisoned. Or did I miss Imprisoned earlier? Maybe this isn't Imprisoned. Maybe this is a hero. Oh, he had another Desperate Gambit. Okay. That makes sense. So two power, he gets Mello's name. That is a forced... I think it's in prison, but I might be wrong. It's in prison. Yeah, okay, I did count right. So he gets to kill Mello here, guaranteed, and he just has to kill L, and he has nine power. Yeah, this is... Uh, in prison can be a problem for taking care of L, but it's only a problem if he can't draw back into Rem. If he draws into Rem, this is, like, very over. I don't see a way Kid Jays can bring this back, but again, anything is possible. Is he going to kill Yugi here? He's going to Innocent Facade before killing Yugi? Definitely Tomb Keepers back that Innocent Facade, I would say. Unless he just has allies in his hand that he can't afford to lose. Okay, yeah, he could have saved a rare hunter by putting two false god cards on the same rare hunter. I don't know why. Maybe he didn't realize, or maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you can't put... I don't think there's anything on... I don't think there's any wordage on false god card that would say you can't do that. So I don't... I'm a little confused as to what happened there. Uh, we're probably just seeing a lot of discarding here because Wako just needs to discard his way into the cards he needs to defeat L. He doesn't have any... Getting rid of Imprisoned is still very important to him here so that he can uh, get L's name back, potentially, after he does a kill on him. I think he's debating if he wants to play Misinfo right now or not for that exact reason. 
It's unlikely that Merrick discards anything from his hand on his turn. Yeah, it's very unlikely to trigger misinformation here. Because he would have to go to Pharaoh's tomb. And he has no power right now. Ah, oh, tournament bracket Yugi. Yeah, this this game is... I've, I'm very comfortable just saying that Wako wins this. It might take him a little while to get the kill, but like... He's gonna get it. He is gonna do the kill on L here. Maybe a little prematurely? I don't know. Unless he has Ram in his hand, in which case it puts him at Wincon. Kid Jays is going to go to Kybercraft to Fate, because if Wako has whatchamacallit in his hand, then he wins. He could also win... I don't, I don't know if he has any card that would let him play a scheme, get rid of Imprisoned, and also get L's name at the same time. I don't think so. Well, Accusation plays L back out, and to Yellow Box, so definitely accuse L. Because that'll get the minus one off of him and cover yellow box. Yeah. Unlucky for Wako. And now we're back over to Wako's turn. What will he be doing? He's going to go over to Yagami Residence and gain three. Interesting that he's not going to Task Force just to keep pummeling Merrick with fates. He's got power right now. Oh, he's playing Kira Cult and discarding Shinigami Eyes and discarding Social Minute. Wait, why wouldn't you play Kira Cult and Gird of Imprisoned, though? He's discarding Delete? He's playing Misa. I'm a little confused. Why would he not get rid of Imprisoned there? He didn't even use both plays. Does he just really want Miss Info to proc? He doesn't want to lose Miss Info? That doesn't make sense to me. Getting rid of Imprisoned is way more important. This game might take a little longer than I anticipated. <laughs> We've got Kid J's gaining three and then playing a card, presumably? What card will it be, though? Get myself a drink of my water. Oh, we got Odeon out. Okay. Well, he can get the Millennium Rod back. He's at least two turns away, like three turns away from being able to play it. He's a lot of turns away from being able to play it. And Tomb Keeper's Destiny is very likely to come out and take that away. Okay, now get rid of Imprisoned if you drew another scheme. He's going to play Paranoid Prep and then just... I don't understand why he didn't do that with Cure Cult the other turn. I'm very confused. But it doesn't matter. He got rid of it anyway. He's going to play the Death Note to Kiyomi for three. Just to ensure that he can really kill any heroes that come out. Very fair and understandable. So he really doesn't want to see Mello. I would Tomb Keepers. Yeah, there aren't even any heroes in there. Even if there was a hero in there, I would Tomb Keeper here and get rid of the Millennium Rod. Yeah, and the Millennium Ring. Oh, yeah, goodbye. That's, oh boy. Probably should have played the ring over Odeon, I feel like. But Odeon is also very important to potentially kill Kaiba and get Obelisk. So, I don't know. Playing either of them there would have been probably the right call. But getting that Tomb Keepers on both of those Millennium items really, really hurts Kid J's. That really hurts him a lot. He's going to go over to Kaiba Craft to Fate. He's going to get Nier and Mogi. I don't believe there is anything he can do here to prevent whoever gets played getting killed by either Kiyomi or Light on this next turn. He's going to play near to Light's apartment and going to flip Kiyomi and Misa. Yeah, okay. Well, as long as Wako doesn't mind moving to Task Force HQ, he will get to kill near here and open back up Kiyomi's location. Or he could just move Kiyomi actually to Task Force and kill near that way. Also a fair play. And he's going to social minute back L's name. So he will be able to kill L here as well and put the name back in. That's what I would do. That's how I would have done it. Death Note near and then Light's ability on L. And an accusation has already gone by. He's choosing not to. Maybe worried about the accusation. Fair enough. That's the turn where I would have gone for the kill on L myself. But I also probably would have made the wrong play. What are we going to see here? He's going to gain three and spin two to Shadow Game Kaiba. Okay. He does still need a two or higher strength ally here, or he needs to get a False God card onto Odeon. Whichever he can make happen. That'll be the end of his turn. Back over to Light. Does Light have a way to double kill L this turn? He's not going to Task Force, so I assume it's not going to be via Rem. He's just going to discard to try and get Rem or some other card. Oh, he could have risked everything for the kill with Desperate Gambit if he had just done the kill on L last turn. 
Yeah, he had both Desperate Gambits. That's, that's what I would have done. Oh, he's playing Desperate Gambit now. There's no name token reveal. He's just gaining two to fade himself. Interesting. Interesting decision. I'd probably play Monster to the Task Force and then just drop him at Yellow Box. No, don't put him there. He's going to fade you. Don't do that. Drop him at Yellow Box. He's already discarded, right? He doesn't want to discard that last card. Just let him gain one. He's at 10 anyway. Put Matsuda at Task Force to stop Kiyomi's kill, and then put Light at Yellow Box to stop Light's kill. All you do is let him gain one. I think in the end he decided to just uh, leave Light where he is, so that'll be a dead Matsuda at the end of his turn here. Which will allow him to drop to five thanks to Kiyomi. Mm, yep, there goes Matsuda, and he gets to draw five. Is he going to do the kill on L here? Yes, he is. Well, if he drew Rem, Rem is one of these nine cards, or he's in his hand. We do get a fate from Kid J's here, which will get Mellow on Kiyomi, probably. It's still going to be game, though, if he has Rem. Rem, Rem is a win by moving to Light's apartment, using Rem to kill L, and then killing Mellow. With his ability. But again, there are, I mean, any of these nine cards could be Rem. Hoping that he, he's just hoping if he drew Rem over anything else. There's Umbra, so he'll be able to kill Kaiba on this coming turn. And shadow game him and get that second god card. But is it game over? He is going to Light's apartment. Does he have Rem? If he has Rem, it's game. He has Rem, that's game. That's game. Plays Rem, moves Rem to kill L, ability to kill Mello. And there you have it. That'll be the win for Wako. He will be moving on to our final four. Great games by both competitors. Good stuff. Very, very fun to watch. This this game was insane. This was a crazy game. I can't believe this game happens. <laughs> but great, great stuff from both competitors. Unfortunately, Kid Jays is eliminated, but Waka will be moving on to the top four. So we get to look forward to seeing the final four very soon and how that will play out and who will get to win the Anime Villainous Tournament Arc of 2023. Before we go, just a quick look at our updated bracket. Waka was emerged victorious and will be going up against Azure Horizon in the semifinals, and we are left with just one heavyweight match to go to determine the final four competitors. Look forward to that game soon, and until then, farewell.